Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. First, I want to thank everyone for coming out again tonight. I really appreciate all you night owls. Well, maybe you've earned it. Maybe you'll earn it. You make it to the end of the broadcast. <laughs> uh, I'll say that you're night owls. But um, before we begin in any introductions, I want to start the evening off with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you on behalf of these, your people. Father, I ask that the forces of darkness, the principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places that have set themselves against your people be bound in the name of Jesus. I ask, dear Lord, that all of our enemies be vanquished by the power of your Holy Spirit. I ask that you destroy any weapons that have been formed against us and that if our enemy come before us one way, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, they flee before us seven ways. Lord, I pray confusion and confounding in the enemy's camp, and that you will have them in derision. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will work against those that work against us. I thank you that you have declared in your word that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I ask you, Father, that if any believer be attacked in their physical body, that their attack be rendered null and void right now in Jesus' mighty name. But we know, Father, that our adversary, the devil, is a liar. We know that you have declared in your word that, Jesus, that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. There is no sickness in his body. So there should be no sickness in our bodies. There is no fear in his body. So there should be no fear in our bodies. There is no depression in his body. So there should be no depression in our bodies. There is no pain in his body. So there should be no pain in our bodies. There is no lack in his body. So there should be no lack in our bodies. We live by the faith of the Son of God and stand on the promises declared in your holy word for us and ask all of these things of you, Father, in the mighty name of your Son, King Jesus. Father, we know that there are those whose bodies are broken and infirmed, but as Jesus said to the disciples about the blind man who was blind from birth, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that that the works of God should be made manifest in him, that even those who now presently may be enduring these hardships, that ultimately it will be that your works might be made manifest in them also. We know that you have been and are magnified and glorified by their faith in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you recompense tribulation to those that trouble us. If any witch come against us, we ask that you break their witchcraft power in the mighty name of King Jesus and cause them to repent and believe in Jesus, lest they be destroyed by the very weapons they so foolishly formed against us. Father, we ask for peace and undisturbed composure 
In every situation and circumstance, we ask for your guidance and direction in all the affairs of our lives. We ask you for supernatural protection of all of our families, friends, loved ones, and co-workers in Jesus' mighty name. We ask that for those who do not know you, that they may come to know you in a new and living way through the saving power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask for favor and grace in all of our dealings and that your ministering spirits be sent forth to minister on our behalf as you have declared in your word, because we are heirs to your salvation. And now I'd like to ask any of the brothers and sisters on the panel, if you have anything to add to this prayer, please do so now. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just wanted uh, to add to what Lisa is saying. Uh, I want to pray specifically for all those, uh, all of your children out there, all of uh, the believers who trust in you and at various levels. Um, I just ask that uh, even though their eyes are open to salvation, that their eyes would be open to the true nature of this broken, fallen world. And I pray for your peace and your joy uh, to be given to them, that they would uh, open up to that and be willingly accept it. And to know that uh, you are in control and you are sovereign despite the way things look. And if they are at all are counting on anything from the world, that they would uh, continue to turn to you, cling to your word, and allow your Holy Spirit to make them strong, and that we would all be able to stand. I also pray for uh, the unsaved out there that are living this broken, fallen world. And uh, we know from your word that any of your children, any that you've given to Jesus, will uh, eventually be saved. So we pray for those, those unsaved uh, uh, children. And we pray that they will, through this whole process, that they will turn to you, they will cling to you, and that their eyes and ears will be open to your word. And Amen. Amen. Um, I, I would just like to add, um, Father, I really hope that, uh, I know you're seeing a lot of the, the, the the warriors who are going out on your behalf right now and um, contending against the evil that we're seeing in a lot of our streets. Um, one woman named uh, Babylon Beatty uh, came across my radar recently, and not only has she been protesting these um, uh, uh, violent riots and the lies that are, uh, you know, being uh propped up by, uh, you know, what appear to be a lot of planned protests in certain areas throughout the country, but she has, has been doing this for a long time, going and praying in front of abortion clinics and getting arrested for the cause of Christ. And she always, always brings um, the gospel uh, anywhere she goes into the situation and, and lets people know it's not a political solution, but it's a spiritual solution. But Lord, I just pray that you would protect her and all those like her who are actually you know, putting their money where their mouths are and actually going out and putting themselves at very real risk of getting shot um, uh, by, uh, you know, peacefully, but uh, forcefully contending uh, for the truth of your word and um, contending against the, the, the wickedness that they're trying to unleash, on, uh, you know, on all of us and this mind virus of hatred they're trying to infect us all with. Um, so I just pray that you would put, you know, a supernatural hedge of protection around Bevelyn Beatty and um, all those like her and all of those who are going out and supporting her as well, because we do know that there are some people in this country that uh, uh, would have no problem shooting them dead in the street and feel like they're justified in doing it because they hate you and they hate your word and they hate the gospel. Um, and uh, uh, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Does anyone else have anything else to add? Did anyone else have anything to add? Nope. Nope. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank you for that, Lord, for her supernatural protection. Yes. I couldn't do what uh, she's doing. I, 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 when I saw her praying in front of these abortion clinics, I, I thought about it and I was like, I couldn't. I don't think I would be strong enough. It would break my heart so much even be there knowing what's well, going so, on inside 
Well, Sister Angel, you, you seem like you have this fire burning in your belly about this. So, well, part of the the one of my talk was going to be this evening, just in a general overview, was you know we were told that we had a republic. I'm not so sure that's true, but uh, when they asked Benjamin Franklin uh, after they had been in deliberations and dealing with uh, the writing of the Constitution, they asked him, what do we have, sir? And it's reported that he replied, a republic, if you can keep it. Yeah. And so uh, I just wanted to ask, <laughs> first off, do you think we really have a republic? And two, do you think we'll be able to keep it if we do? And if we don't, then what do you see that you think uh, is a strong indicator that we, we don't or never did? So, Sister Angel, I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, start the ball rolling here. Oh, okay. Where you're talking um, about this particular person um, as, you, as you prayed yeah. for her. Um, because bef before you start, before you start, I have started to perceive that maybe maybe we didn't get told the truth about the church's role and what we were supposed to be doing because I think we forgot that Jesus said we were supposed to occupy so he yes. comes. And I, I see a lot of Christians where they abdicate, like they'll be working somewhere and the Lord has placed them there to be a minister of righteousness. Maybe the one sane person in all of that chaos and mess but they don't they don't submit themselves to him and say lord what should i do should i leave well because if you're going to want me to stay here you're going to have to give me the strength to endure this madness to be that one minister of righteousness that's there and a lot of times they just abdicate and they just split now i'm not talking about if you were actually working for a demonic entity like moloch incorporated otherwise known as planned parenthood i'm talking about if you were working, you, a believer should not be there. That's for sure. But yeah. uh, if you were working, let's say, in the government and in some faction of government where you could actually be a buffer and a minister of righteousness to show grace and mercy rather than just, you know, this entity coming and just slamming people, okay, with whatever policies or whatever, and you're able to not break the law but show some grace and mercy within the law, okay, um, because as the Bible says, the letter of the law kill it. And we know that they got one set of rules for us and another set of rules for them. We know how it goes. So I'm just wondering, in, in, in the light of those types of things uh, and what you see happening, would you agree with that statement that I think the church basically got tricked in, in being told that we really weren't supposed to be involved in social issues? We should just be praying and waiting on the rapture and and just winning souls, but not actually engaging the, the the social construct and structure and evil that we see within the system. What do you think about that? Um, yes, you know, I, th I think it's understandable because it's it's difficult for people to draw a line. Um, you know, you you see, uh, I mean, even for myself, uh, you know, being passionate about really what's a, a you know a political issue. Um, without crossing that line into um, this fervor where you get drawn into the, you know, to like, what, you know, we call the right, you know, the left right paradigm um, and just sort of like trusting in politics or especially a, a particular leader. I mean, if you guys thought 2016 and the Trump mania was bad, like, I don't, I don't think we're, we're ever going to see anything like the worship that's going to happen over the next, you know, next year because of all the turmoil that's been unleashed on the country, people are, are going to take it to a next level with Donald Trump. I mean, people think that everything is counting on him. And um, so I think that's the danger. And I think a lot of people, you know, will withdraw from it all it, just to make sure they don't get caught up in that. But it, we have to remember that when, you know, God, God cares for the lost and we're, we're all he has, you know, to work through to try to help guide them and to, to steer them in the right direction to make, even if the, you know, even if they're never going to believe, um, you know, I think God would like for us to influence people that maybe we're, are going to be lost forever. Maybe not to, to ruin the, the closest thing they have to heaven uh, by, for instance, aborting child after child after child or, 
um, of, you know, living a life that's only guaranteed to make them miserable, not to mention all the people that we can lead to the Lord through our example and through contending for what's right um, and showing them the way and standing on truth. Um, um, but I think that I think it's true. Yeah. I mean, we, we can't uh, I get criticized now sometimes for for posting certain uh, uh like in my community tab, I'll post certain links to stories that are, you know, kind of about all the civil unrest and everything. And people are like, oh, oh more, oh, oh, more of this. This is all about division or what? It's like, no, the truth divides. Truth divides. Like, you know, just because, just because we know that Satan is a liar and all of this, you know, has there's a, there's an end game involved. I mean, I've been saying for a long time now that I think that they're doing a lot of this on purpose. Because what they're trying to, to, to foment is the backlash against um, lawlessness. And they want authoritarianism. They want us to embrace authoritarianism. I see that. But at the same time, truth is truth and lies are lies. And so when I see somebody can, you know, even if, you know, Bevelyn Beatty, for instance, she's a Trump 2020 person. Um, she's a Christian, though. And she really believes that that's the, that's the Christian thing to do right now. She believes that's the best bet because she sees the alternative. Um, and I, I can't fault people for that. I can't fault people for seeing how, you know, they're beheading statues of Jesus Christ and um, burning down churches. I can't fault Christians for supporting Donald Trump, uh, even though I'm sure a great deal of them know that he's not, he's not really somebody you can trust. Um, I, I, you know, they're, they're, they're terrified right now of the alternative, you know, just for the world, you know, they, they know where their eternal, uh, they know that they're already seated in heavenly places, but we also know we have to endure what what happens in this world in the meantime to our children and so do a lot of people who are lost and a lot of our loved ones. So I, I don't fault people for that. Um, I can't get real passionate about it because I don't trust him at all. And I, I personally, I I think that's the that's the goal. I do believe it's the goal. I believe all of this is being <sighs> unleashed because they want us to. They want an equal and opposite reaction, uh, uh, and, and they want they want us to not because even now, like we're seeing federal uh, courthouses being attacked repeatedly, repeatedly in, in Portland. This federal courthouse is trying to burn it down, and it's funny because now they've got conservatives, really a lot of them contending against the idea of local control and small local government because it just so happens that these local governments are are, are democratic. They're Democrats, and so they're liberal, and they are making very unjust rulings and, and letting people out after, you know, violent riots and not even charging them and being totally unfair. But we're, you know, they've got, they've tricked Republicans into to calling for martial law and to calling for the feds, you know, to come in and bust heads and all that stuff. And um, see, I think that's a sign of really what they're trying to do. Uh, but at the same time, um, I do believe that they did set up what I, as far as I can tell in this country, it's about the closest thing to an ideal, you know, country that we could have, you know, that, that I know of in, in existence and, and, you know, in the history of the world in terms of, you know, uh, the structure of the government and everything like that. Um, uh, and the, the potential for fairness, the potential for, um, uh, just to be left alone and allowed to to pursue the basic things that you know normal people want, um, you know, to have a home and a family. That you know, that the potential was there for there to be something, you know, pretty unparalleled. I think that that was kind of the point. I think that they designed it that way so they could tear it down, and Satan could really tell God, like, look, you know, I gave them this republic. I gave, you know, we we made it perfect, as perfect as they could get it, at least, and. We, uh, we gave them choice after choice, and they chose um, little by little to destroy it. Uh, they, because it was our own, you know, in a lot of times, you know, we, we chose to either uh, actively vote against the spirit of this country and how it was founded um, and what it was intended for, actively vote against it due to our own greed, wanting, you know, wanting handouts and things like that, or we, you know, we chose to allow powerful people, lobbyists and everything, to usurp the power of the people because we were too lazy and complacent. But either way, we, ch we chose to allow those things to happen. And I think that Satan loves to set, set up six scenarios like that where he can, you know, prove that even if we were given something really decent, that we would end up, we would end up the same way um, everywhere else has always ended up. 
Uh, so, but I don't know. There's a lot of wrangling and legal. There's a lot of arguments that perhaps the entire Constitution is double speak and that it actually, you know, that we have no rights that we think that we have. And, mm-hmm. you know, for instance, like I've said, the 14th Amendment, rather than freeing the slaves, you know, or is it the 14th Amendment? basically rather than freeing the slaves, they actually enslaved everybody. I forget, I forget right now. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was the 14th. That the, and I've heard, like, you know, I've listened to like four hour dissertations on this, but it doesn't really matter because that wasn't really what the, the, the general public would have. That's not what we we believed the country was. And what really matters is what the general person in America, what we thought we were participating in. And I think what we think, we're, you know, what we think we had, the, the, the American dream or the, the spirit of this country, I think is um, was fundamentally better than anywhere else that I know of. I, I mean, I, I've never heard anybody put forth an argument that there was some, there was another, there was a better place to that, you know, that, that there's a place that got closer to what we would consider um, ideal. And um, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I still think that because we have to live until, you know, until the Lord returns, we have to live uh, in this world. I do think that we should fight for um, what we can. Well, Sister Angel, let me stop you there. You said a lot. You said a lot. Yeah. Some very mm-hmm. excellent points. But I want to get some thoughts from the, the other members yes. of the panel here. Uh, uh, Brother Cripps, what do you think about what both I and uh, Sister Angel pointed out? Did, did anything stand out to you that you'd like to comment on? Uh, well, first of all, um, I, I, I'm definitely in agreement with both of you. Big, big surprise, I'm sure. Um, uh I don't even know where to start, actually. Why do you uh, think that would be a surprise, brother? Because I, oh, I wasn't I was surprised joking. that you were... I was oh, being sarcastic. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Big surprise that I would agree. Uh, I would agree. Um, uh, as I mentioned before the show, the, the past couple of uh, weeks, some of the subjects I've talked about, uh, you know, like the American dream and all that stuff, uh, you know, d- is that still... Uh, is it still possible? Is it still achievable? Um, also, uh, you know, I talk a lot about that, you know, we live in a broken, fallen world and uh, the, the role of Satan and um, the republic, the idea of a republic, uh, at least when the Constitution was written, um, you know, it was a brave new world. I mean, they're, they're uh, escaping religious persecution. Originally, the people that came here and uh, separating from England and uh, British rule and uh, high taxes and all that stuff, stuff. So this country was literally based on freedoms and those freedoms were uh, provided for us. And they said uh, they even invoked God. Now, I'm not sure uh, entirely which God that they were uh, really, really believing in. That's a, probably a subject for another time. But they did uh, say that God has given us uh, certain inalienable rights, uh, and those rights today, I believe, I would, I would certainly uh, agree that it seems those rights have been eroding. It didn't just uh, start in March; it's been happening slowly over time. And we can go back to 9/11 and talk about some of the rights that started to be taken away after that happened, under the guise of protecting us from terrorism. Brother Cripps, yeah, I want to inject something. I think it goes way back before that. Oh, I know. I would go all the way back to like the 1913 Federal Reserve Act, but go ahead. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. That's the point I'm making. I just, you know, a lot of people aren't going to remember that. Nobody was alive then. That that. Well, probably there's some people still alive. Um, but that's the one that that people remember. Yes, they they've been slowly eroding our rights over time, but now uh, I think that the things that happened in March, it seemed like some things did happen overnight. Uh, you know, we woke up in the morning and all of a sudden um, businesses were closed and and uh, we're supposed to be six feet apart. We're supposed to wear a mask and all this stuff seemingly overnight have happened. And yes, there are people that are against it. There are people that are standing up like uh, uh, the person that Angel's mentioning. I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Um, there, there are people that are standing up. Um, but I, I've, I've also talked to people that uh, agree with us and have a similar opinion, but the, but they are afraid to speak out. And that, I believe, is part of the social conditioning 
that has been happening. And uh, I, I wish that we weren't afraid. I wish that we were standing up uh, to preserve our republic. As far as the question about can it be saved, yes, if it can be saved if God is not ready to allow things to happen to bring about what's uh, uh, discussed in Revelation. If he's not ready, they, they have tried this before. They've tried to, to break the current system down and start the system, uh, the beast system. By the way, we're already in the beast system. Make no mistake about it, it is a beast system. Uh, but I mean the, the biblical Revelation and Daniel uh, beast system, which leads to the end, um, to, to uh, put that in motion, which a lot of us uh, believe that that's one world currency, one world religion, one, you know, all that stuff. Um, uh, the, I believe they want to make that happen. And, but the biggest thing of, about being a republic is that we're supposed to have rights. Now, I would argue that there are, there are certain people that have uh, less rights than others, even in America. And, you know, so, but when you say to everyone else, okay, you don't have the right to do this anymore, where's the outrage? Where's, where's, where are the people that are saying, no, no, we're not going to put up with this? They are counting on us just falling in line like sheep and lining up for the slaughter. Um, so, can the republic be saved if it is truly a republic? Uh, if, if God's not ready for these events to take place, yes. Um, but that's the only thing I can see happening because people are certainly seem unwilling to to get together. Their their plan to divide us has worked, in my opinion, uh, along racial lines, along religious or uh, spiritual beliefs, and uh, different denominations, and all that. They've infiltrated the brick and mortar church, I believe, uh, and, and not just one group, not just witches. You know, new age people have uh, gotten in there, right. and uh, false uh, pastors and uh, false converts, calling themselves Christians and deceiving many, many people. And the Bible warns us about this. This this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Mm -hmm. But but yet, are we supposed to? And this is a question for everyone: Are we supposed to uh, just? sit quietly in, in our houses and, and pray and fellowship with each other and not do anything? Are, are we not supposed to stand up? Are we not supposed to shake our fist and say, look, we're not going to put up with this. This is supposed to be a republic. We're not, we're not communist China. We're not a socialist country yet. Um, so what, what's our role as believers? We're supposed to be salt and light to the world, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean in this situation? Right. I have to well, just say one thing. I don't think they divided us. I think that just warning everybody, I don't think that they, I think that we see stuff on the TV and we assume, well, that's how these people all feel. And that's how, I don't, I don't think that's true. I don't see any of that happening in real life around me. I think most normal people think what's happening right now is, is atrocious. You know, honestly, um, I don't think most people want the police to be defunded, but I think they want us to believe they've divided us along racial lines completely. You know, that, that the, you know what I mean? Like I, I cause that's, I, I have more faith in, in, um, in black people than to think that they all want the police defunded and all that, but they are trying very hard to make us think that we have been successfully divided down the middle, you know, down the line between black and white. I don't think it's true though. Okay. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I, that's from where I am. I don't know about where you are. If it, if it, if you're seeing that in real life, I have not seen it manifest here. Well, let me tell you an experience I had today. I had a family member that needed to go to the bank to take care of some business. And when she went to go in, she didn't have her mask. She's, she doesn't feel like fighting. She knows it's all BS. She's totally woke. She just doesn't want to have to have those battles every time you get ready to go in somewhere. You don't know what you're going to get. You know, are you going to get somebody that's just going to go, okay, ma'am, that's your option? Or are you going to get the person that goes, oh, you have to wear it, like they're going to call the police or something, you know? So right. she goes to go in. Now, they all have, all the bank workers have on masks. This was a black security guard. She's standing there, very polite. She says, 
don't worry about it, man. You don't have to put it on. I was like, what? We, this is California. With all that mess they got going on, she said, she told me I did not have to put it on. I was like, what? So, but the next place she went to, uh, they wanted her to put it on. So she did. But it's starting to be more sporadic now from what I've noticed. Some places are saying you have to, which you don't, not under the law. There's no law. So uh, it's a suggestion. It's a directive. It's a mandate. It's not a law. And it, but here's the danger. And I already see it coming. Diane Feinstein out here uh, is already pontificating through her words smithing. She's already telegraphing. They're going to try to make it a law. So this, <laughs> I saw this mess coming. If you roll over and play dead mm -hmm. and you don't stand up to their tyranny peaceably, they go, well, they don't even care if we take this right away. So what do you think a tyrant is going to do? So, that you is know, they have divided us about the masks. Everybody's divided about the masks. That is, they have been successful there. Well, that's it, being divided. That, that, yeah. that, that's not separate from other types of division. Oh, um, well, I just right. meant the racial right. division. I, I thought that they had not been, because, because you said that they had divided us along all the lines, but I just, I personally don't think they've, divided us successfully along racial lines. I think that the media hypes that so that we think they have, but I, I think yeah, we're I'm actually, not, we I have more common ground. I don't disagree with what you're saying as far as yeah. what, the, what the media is doing. I don't disagree with yeah. that at all. Oh, they're devils. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I haven't seen any racial tension. Right. Anywhere. I haven't I, seen it. If yeah. somebody's a bigot, they're a bigot, and they've always been a bigot, and that ain't going to change unless the Lord changes them. So, the experiences that that we have that i've had they've all been the, just the way it is any other day of the week in fact most people are trying to be extra yes. nice they're yep. opening doors they're they're being polite they're yep. you know trying to avoid arguments but i tell you one thing i have noticed people are starting to do really stupid stuff even more than usual like in driving um like when uh, my family member went into one of the stores today the person who was in front of her at the register that was checking out left her basket right there. So you know how they're, they're the person's putting their stuff up on the counter and then they are supposed to take the basket at least around to the front. They didn't even do that. They left it between where she was standing. <laughs> so she had to push the basket out of the way to even get up to the register. They just left it. And the, and the lady behind the counter says, she says, I don't know what's wrong with people. And this is what she said. She said, I think it's these masks because people are doing the most stupid stuff I've ever seen. <gasps> oh, wow. I'm like oxygen. And she came out and she told me that. She said, that's what the clerk told me. And she said, and, and then we're driving and people are like, they're even worse drivers than they were before. I, listen, when I shared with you guys what hypoxemia on the other broadcast, and I talk about this, and I've told you to go look it up so you'll know what the symptoms are. So maybe if you have a family member who insists on wearing that mask all the time, starts exhibiting these symptoms, you can print that out for them and say, uh -huh, are you experiencing any of these symptoms? Because that's what all that heavy duty mask wearing does. And maybe we can yeah. slowly and gradually begin to wake people up in a way, because see what this is really about, what an overarching, it's, it's a fact, it's a, a, it's a piece of a much bigger agenda for sure. But one of the things that they are definitely targeting with these masks are the loss of your health freedoms. And that yep. is extremely dangerous. If you do not have the right to tell these doctors no for any particular medical procedure or a uh, thing that they want to do to you, you, you're worse than a slave. Brother Ben, you haven't spoken. You haven't chimed up on this yet. Well, this is definitely not my uh, specialty, uh, social issues. But, I mean, and I tend to think, uh, especially on social issues in general, I tend to think big picture. Um, I mean, ultimately, I think that, you know, we could, we, the people could fight all they want, and that will make a difference for sure. But um, the powers that be that nowadays, uh, they, they, they do such, such deception and uh, fraud in our system 
that ultimately people can rise up all they want and uh, still they will um through deception um through media particularly nowadays they can uh manipulate the weak-minded people in which there are many um so that even all the fighting that we were to you know anyone would do against it uh it's ultimately, I think it's it's the people that are that are in power that are going to make the difference. And I th- I think God puts people in power, and I believe the people generally get the government that that God sees that they deserve, uh, or or that He needs to have someone in position to for the furtherance of the gospel. I mean, the church we we, we might face some severe persecution coming up, and I think you're already seeing some of the church uh, being persecuted, especially with this. Uh, recent spate of events, um, but ultimately, I think that makes the church stronger. All through all throughout history, uh, God's people, when they're persecuted, that's when they grew and multiplied. And and perhaps we do need a little bit of more um, refining um, the fiery trial. I think I think the church at large has gotten lazy and spiritually lazy. Um, not not uh, not you know they need they need more spiritual energy, sound doctrine, uh, etc. There's there's always been a, a you know, remnant or whatever, but um, I think uh, you know all, all these things happen for a reason, and and I don't think there's a whole lot any of us can do um, about it, and I don't think generally that there's anything new under the sun. So it's the th- same things we're seeing now happen to, to people all throughout history. Um, yes, they are different, and they may be more um, they're different, but they ultimately they they have the same effect. I think. Um, and I also think it kind of think of it this way too, is that, you know, I see one of the things I see with dispensationalism, I, I consider myself a dispensationalist, but probably perhaps not uh, have the same definition of dispensationalism, but essentially my, my version of dispensationalism is God dispenses various knowledge at different times. And I think that's pretty clear in scripture. You know, he didn't reveal the gospel, uh, the, you know, the, the, the person of Christ and he was going to die for people's sins. He didn't reveal that to the Israelites. Um, you know the old the New Testament was concealed in the Old Testament, and so I see the different ages of uh, dispensations. Like the first the first dispensation was the age of innocence, where he had Adam and Eve in the garden, and they had no rule, they had no law except for one, and uh, it basically showed that man, even though even though man was innocent, he's not righteous. If he had been righteous, he would man would never have sinned in that garden. So I see each dispensation as different testing of man. Um, it, then you have the age of conscience. That's after the fall, where you, I think, Cain and Abel is kind of uh, typified that that age of conscience, where people kind of uh, ruled, man ruled each other um, by by the conscience that God gave them, and that was an utter flop and failure. And it had, in fact, it was such a flop flop that they had to bring the flood in. Then you had the age of of, of man's man's government, and that was the Tower of Babel incident. And again, man can't man is. is incapable of governing himself it's, it's always going to be corrupt then you have the age of uh the dispensation of promise and get the promise that god made through abraham uh through faith and then you have the law of moses which is basically god's law and we we saw israel uh, israel is a picture of all of us um as as the old man uh, as a fallen old man we can't the, the law can only expose our unrighteousness righteousness it cannot provide righteousness and then because that was such a, a flop, God says, okay, now it's going to be the, the age of grace where uh, I'm going to empower you through my Holy Spirit uh, through those who believe. And uh, and so with that, I think we're, that's where you're seeing the church grow and uh, thrive in some respects. But at the same time, people who reject that, think about that. I mean, God's revealed word through Christ was his ultimate, ultimate revelation. And people who reject that now – it can only make them more sinful and more wicked. And so I think as time goes on, you're going to see things more sinful and wicked because uh, believers are going to, the, the church is going to get more persecuted and evil will grow because they will have rejected it. The, the, the promise it's just like in Hebrews where it says, you know, once he, uh, someone's been enlightened to the truth, if they, uh, again, I believe this is talking to believers, but this is a general principle it, 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 uh for anyone that if you see the truth, you reveal the truth, and you, then you reject it, well, the, you're even more responsible. You're even, you're even more responsible for that, and it's only going to make you more sinful um, as you fight against it. And then finally, you have the final uh, final uh, dispensation, which is the kingdom. I believe it is Christ's millennial reign with his saints. And again, that's also going to show that even with God Himself, 
on the throne visibly and all his saints visibly uh, uh, ruling and reigning, man uh, will still uh, will still revolt against that. And that's the final insurrection uh, led by Satan uh, in which uh, it's ultimately uh, c consumed and the new eternal age is consummated. So I say all that just to say that, you know, uh, these are tricky issues. I'm not saying uh, we should ignore them, and but I, I think that we got to be careful not trying to focus on some of the physical aspects uh, of things and more on the um, spiritual aspects. So, mm -hmm. you know, I hear like losing this republic. Well, that, that's kind of a spiritual uh, or a physical uh, thing, whereas um, the, the spiritual uh, success of this nation under under the gospel is the thing I, I think all of us are most concerned about. And so I just think we don't want to lose sight of that. I absolutely agree with what you said. For for somebody who didn't have much to say on it, <laughs> you did all right. But but let me say this. If we don't preserve the liberty and freedoms concerning free speech, at the very least, how are we going to preach the gospel? I totally agree I mean, with that. I, don't, I just don't think I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I, I, I don't, I don't want to be misunderstood. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Lisa. And I, I agree with everything you guys said. I'm not going against it whatsoever. I'm just mm -hmm. adding another layer. Um, the, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, the only thing I, I see is that I, I struggle. And this is a struggle I have. I think we all have this. Is that okay? Well, where, what, what do we do about it? You know, like what, what can I do about it? I, I think the only way you can change people is with the gospel. Ultimately, um, mm -hmm. we can put rights. I mean, like. You know, we could fight like I, I see a lot of like, you know, Christians getting in bed with like uh, other flat earthers, for example, that are unbelieving flat earthers. And they just right. they just get along and they, they don't talk about their differences at all. And uh, it's slowly you start seeing compromise and, mm -hmm. um, and just say with government, you know, we don't say, uh, OK, yeah, the Christians, we're all going to get on board with the uh, with Trump or whatever. Um, you know, mm -hmm. even, like say he was a, he really was a good guy doing the right thing. Um, the. The compromise that's involved there, you know, we see him, for example, uh, you know, every every he, he celebrates Muslim holidays, uh, Indian holidays, all that kind of stuff. So um, I just I just like to keep myself pure with pure with the with pure sound doctrine and not allow myself to be to be to be defiled by the world. You know, as much as possible, I try to keep the world out um, and I don't focus a whole lot on it. Um, so you did ask. So <laughs> awesome. No, no. Hey, hey, I did. And and I I really believed you when you thought you when you said you thought you didn't have much to say. <laughs> but you did wonderfully. So thank you for that. But what I what I'm OK, let me let me go back even further, because I had mentioned to Brother Cripps that one we can go all the way back to. Nine, which before that. You know, there are people who allege that the Constitution was actually suspended, uh, I believe, in 1871, if, if I'm right about that. So that's one of the reasons we see all this so-called tyranny going forth. You remember our uh, president, uh, oh, let's see, George Herbert Walker Bush, right? No, George W. Herbert Walker was his father. George W. was the one that said, the Constitution was nothing but a goddamn piece of paper. That's a quote. That's what he said. There are clips with him saying it. Don't believe me? Go look. Now, people got angry when he said that. But I realized that I'm not saying, you know, the, the curse part, but it is just a piece of paper. Because if you don't stand up to preserve your rights, that paper doesn't protect you. And the Constitution is an enumeration of what is inalienable. And that's what people don't understand. The paper is not what protects me. It is a right given by God. But in order to protect that right, people have to be willing to say, not today, devil, when they try to usurp themselves above your God-given rights. Peaceably, but not today. Now, I was looking at something where uh, I found a gentleman. I was going to say, is this, this, this stuff is going way back, incrementalism to tyranny. That he, he was uh, trying to find the last time this government, 
did anything for all the people equally at once that benefited all the people. Mm -hmm. He said he had to go back over 100 years. I said that's only because I'm not trying to be funny or mean. That's only because he didn't <laughs> include uh, black folk. Because if he went back from the time period he was talking about, black folks were still enslaved. So, so it, they never did anything that benefited all the people equally. Now, when you go back to um, tax certificates, this shows you that we were never meant to be free. No one. Not in, not in this country, because the 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 only people who actually had rights in the beginning to certain things like voting were property owners. Um, for example, under the suffrage movement, we we always thought that women didn't have the right to vote, including and especially white women. It's not true. If white women were property owners, they had the right to vote. The suffrage movement was for poor women. Who didn't have any property. So if you go back to tax certificates, what I had started to talk about, those, I think he said the first tax certificate he saw was all the way back from like the mid 1700s. And he said, well, what's a tax certificate? Okay. Tax certificates are certificates that are written against your property. Should you um, like not pay the bill? You know, you get that bill in the mail and it says property tax whatever it is, for your property. If you don't pay that, every state has a process where that will roll over and they can people can literally go and purchase what's called a tax certificate and you have so much time to pay that debt off plus the interest because you were late on the tax bill in which the interest, a portion of it goes to the state and a portion of it goes to the person as an investment basically because what they're doing is giving the state the revenue that you didn't. So in other words, let's say you had a $100 tax bill and you didn't pay it. You're late. It was due June 1st. You missed it. Uh, somebody else steps up. They immediately issue a tax certificate. And then somebody else steps up and says, I'll pay for that. But the state has promised them in some cases, I, I hear it's as much as 24 or more percent on some of these tax certificates. But they average around 15 to 20 percent, somewhere in there, 12 to 15 percent. So if they step up and they say, I'll pay this $100, they're guaranteed by the state that they will receive back, let's just round it off to, to um, 20%. They'll get 120 guaranteed, because if the person defaults, they're going to take the property and sell it. So whenever, whenever they pay back that person who bought the tax certificate, they're guaranteed to get that money. So you were never meant to own because the state is the one that owns your house. If you don't pay that tax, they can take your property after so much time. So how is it yours? And this was the argument that he was making about this and how we've been deceived. We've been Jedi mind trick. Uh, there's different levels to their slavery. And and now what we're seeing is they're trying to bring everybody down to the to the same level. It might never to be humble opinion, but does anybody else ha have anything else they'd like to add on that? Yeah, I, that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, I, okay. I, I just want to say um, real quick. Um, the, I, I again, I, I might, might be under, misunderstood, but the thing I want to relate I, that the sentiment I think we all agree on 100 percent that if America falls, so does the rest of the world, and. Um, you know, I think it is worth preserving the the fundamental uh, principles of this nation, and I, you know, I do. Um, I I am a, I, I do feel fortunate to be uh, a, a citizen in this country, and I just think that uh, uh, you know we we should be uh, as uh, wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. You know, um, and uh, you know, it's, it's it's tempting to put get things in our own hands and and uh, make a statement, but. Um, I think we need to be very careful and thoughtful in our actions about what we what we do. So, yeah, I would agree. Okay. Did anybody else have anything they'd like to add? 
Yeah, I was going to I was going to say that uh, what you're saying, Lisa, ties into what I was saying, uh, that there are certain people don't have as many rights as others. I like what you said, and I completely agree that they're trying to take everyone's rights, not just certain groups of people, but everyone's. Uh, I, I, I agree that that's what they're doing, leveling the playing field, so to speak, um, so that we're all in the same place. And eventually they're going to want us to to band together under what, whatever leader this is that comes out. Uh, so they have to preserve that somehow. They have to make us all at least agree on that point to uh, to bring bring this uh, person um, into power and how they do that. Um, some of the things they're doing now to me uh, seems like signs uh ways that they're changing everything to get us to that point i, I don't think it's going to happen the next year or even two years but i believe they're taking the steps now to to get us where they want us to go later yes um there are those that are making arguments that they're actually trying to move us to a more cashless society we already knew that yes. i knew that when they issued the debit card what was that 30 years ago or so, roughly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, and people are like, oh, my God, it's the mark of the beast. I'm like, no, it's not. Why don't y'all just read your Bible? How are you yeah. going to put that card in your forehead? Okay, just relax. Look at what the Bible says it will be. It'll have to be in your hand or your forehead, and you can't buy or sell without it. It's very, very specific. Okay, so, no, the mask is not the mark of the beast. Just because they're telling you you can't enter these establishments. We're seeing precursors. We're seeing foreshadows of what is to come. This, is, this should be screaming to people who are unbelievers that, you know, I've heard something about this. And this is getting real close to what these crazy Christians are talking about. This is to wake them up. The, the cry is going out. Uh, this thing's about to get wound up just like the Bible said. And anybody who is an unbeliever that's heard any type of eschatology about the end times, it ought to make them take note. Those left behind movies and all that, whether or not you agree with their whole scenario, still had some things in it that were true about the end times. And a lot, millions of unbelievers saw that thing too. So this should be their wake up call. And we should be pointing to this stuff. Going, doesn't this stuff make you feel creepy? Does it make you feel weird? Don't you think it's dark? And start having conversations with people about it and pointing to the light of Christ. Because a lot of people, most people don't like it. When you start talking to them about it, they hate it. They don't want to wear the freaking mask. But that you won't know that if you don't engage them. You know, if you just that's stand back there right. and you go, I'm sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, I'm saying that's perfect. You're absolutely right. That's a perfect way to approach it. Yeah, because people are going... If you go, man, I hate wearing these masks. And they go, I do too. I'm like, you know, the Bible talks about stuff like this. Because even if, if all you get is that, maybe they go home and they go, the Bible talks about stuff like this? Maybe they'll open it up for the first time in their life and start looking at it. But anyway, Sister Angel, do you have anything else you'd like to remark on this? Um, yeah, I just wanted to echo what Ben said about, you know, it really does seem, you know, for better or worse that um, – that if America falls, that you know, we're the the last best chance of any sort, you know, semblance of freedom of speech. And um, uh, I think it's a very good point. You know, how do we? How you know, we have to contend for these things so that we can contend for the gospel. And they're trying mm -hmm. to attack that, and very blatantly that they are attacking it. Um, you know, they're they're singling churches out, uh, trying to prevent people from attending church, uh, preventing people from you know, try, laughably trying to prevent people from praise and worship when they're in church, which I think tells you a lot about who's behind it, because that's a very powerful form of spiritual warfare. I've seen it with my own eyes, the, mm -hmm. the, the way uh, praise and worship, you know, beats back the devil right before your mm -hmm. very eyes. And um, they, they, they're, you know, arbitrarily, that's what, you know, one of the things they're targeting in churches of all the things, I think that's the very reason they said, you know, they came out with this nonsense about singing and raising your voice and talking yes. spreads fake COVID. Um, and um, I think it's, you know, important now that, uh, you know, people people want to, you know, argue about whether or not, well, is it real or is it this or is it, is it just a bad flu? 
let's just go with it's not real because it does, if it's a sniffles, then essentially it's not real because what they told us was it was a deadly pandemic um, mm-hmm, that would kill mm-hmm. us all. So let's not overcomplicate the matter. Let's just say, no, it's not real because there is no actual deadly pandemic that's killing everybody. We should be able to tell that by now, but they've got us so spun that we can't even tell. We don't even know what reality is anymore because yeah. it's like, you know, <laughs> people, people just can't discern the truth from fiction and i think that's you know the very goal of it all and i think we do i think i think you know we're an example to others and if we we could we could just you know sit back and say no we're gonna we're gonna pray we're gonna contend for the gospel and i and i absolutely believe that that is you know the key to everything but we have to um facilitate our ability to even do that in a public square at this point it is being completely challenged they've they've turned everything upside down to where um you know speech is violence and violence is speech and uh, just the very fact that you you know we were talking about this last night the very fact that i you know as a christian i believe for instance that homosexuality is a sin but does it mean that you know it's not even it's not my pet sin i don't have a big you know uh you know obsession with you know you know, yelling at homosexuals because that per- personally it doesn't offend me the way, you know, like adultery offends me. And I, I'm offended by the fact that people single out homosexuals, but you don't hear them singling out adulterers the same way. I think that's so much more atrocious uh, mm-hmm. because of the harm it causes. So I'm not actually one of these people that, that constantly wants to chase gay people around and make them feel bad. I want them to know Jesus. But the fact that I even hold that it's a sin that's considered violence by these psychos now a lot of these you know um what they call liberal but it's not liberal at all um um, these authoritarian marxists who really do exist in real life now i don't believe that that is i i believe that in the end it's going to be the opposite direction um that we're that you know that our threat really comes from believe it or not but um but these people actually exist in our society and um they're they're the you know they're the problem because they've lost the plot they've lost the, you know uh, they, they don't understand what this country is about anymore they think it's all evil and that um it's evil to to allow christians to believe that uh homosexuality is wrong right but then they want to enforce <laughs> they want to enforce their beliefs via like actual violence like they're actually at the point now where christians um uh, they they don't they don't believe we have the right to live a lot of these people that are um like protesting in portland right now they're repeatedly trying to burn down this federal you know courthouse these are real people and i know be, like i i know it's not all fake because i i wasn't at that extent like i wasn't that crazy but um i you know growing up i i was i was crazy enough that i would have thought that the uh that for instance <laughs> mount rushmore should have been you know, destroyed. I was that crazy uh, because I was so eaten up with guilt and shame and lack of perspective about this country's history versus the rest of the world. So I really, I, you know, I, I know these people are real and these are the people that we, we have to try to reach somehow. And the only way we can do it is by stepping out into the public arena somewhat and um, contending for the gospel but also contending for the, the basic fundamental principles of this country that what we've agreed upon, what we agree, you know, the common consensus, what this country stood for, you know, since its founding, that's what we, you know, uh, that, that's what matters more than the constitution itself is what we thought, you know, the contract that we had in terms of the social contract, what, what America stood for, what's American, what's un-American. And um, uh, it it just so happens that what we consider to be, you know, American in principle is is very congruent with the ability for us to spread the gospel, freedom of speech and um, individuality and all of that. So I uh, I think that there is value in uh, trying to straddle that line between getting, you know, far too involved in worldly politics and um, and withdrawing into yourself and really not being much benefit to the real world. Because um, if I'm not out there, you know, trying to make myself heard as a as a believer, um, and trying to trying to bring the gospel into context with what real everyday people can understand, where it actually makes any sense to them, 
even, um, then I'm not going to, re- you know, if I'm only in an echo chamber where I'm among other believers, I can't really affect those people mm-hmm. very much. So, it, but we have to maintain our ability to even do that because at this point it's, it's truly um, under threat. It's under, you know, we're, <laughs> we're at the point where we have a very real reason to think as a Christian, if we went right now to Portland, all of us went mm-hmm. to Portland and tried to preach the gospel, uh, there would be people there that would think nothing of killing us right on the street, <laughs> college kids, you know, not nothing. Uh, they, they think they would be doing the world a favor because we're hateful. And that's what we're, that's the spirit we're trying to contend against. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we, we still have to, to do that while we can, because otherwise we're just biding our time until the world ends. Well, I just wanted to point out that you do remember that Jesus said in the scripture that there was coming a time mm-hmm. that no man could work. Yep. I'm not saying we're there yet, but just keep that in mind. There That's is coming point. that time, so we do need we do need to be about our father's business as much as possible and peacefully resist. If something is not the law, you are not under any obligation to do it. Now you have to decide what level of resistance you want to, you know, stand up with. Whether or not you would lead, it would lead you to um, legal action against them if your rights have been violated because those rights are there for a reason it's not just a piece of paper the piece of paper is telling you what your rights are but it's up to you to decide how much resistance you want to offer but don't do never step out in your own authority you should always pray and step out in the authority of the lord jesus christ when you stand up against the tyranny now i wanted to say something else i don't know if you guys heard about this I found this on NPR's website, and I'll put a link in the description so you guys can read it, so you can find the article with ease. I don't say this to bring trepidation. I say this to make you aware, okay? Federal officers use unmarked vehicles to grab people in Portland. DHS, that's Department of Homeland Security, confirms. I'm just going to read a little bit of this article, and then I want you to think about something, because when I was reading this, I was going through it, and every time they asked very important questions about why these people were being arrested without any charges, um, you're not supposed to be arrested unless there's a charge against you, there's something that you've broken the law, there's something that's going on that an officer can swear to that he saw you violate or break the law or a sworn complaint against you from someone else. Um, They're just grabbing people in unmarked minivans that are protesters. I I said this weeks ago, don't go out there trying to be a social justice warrior in the midst of all this chaos because bullets don't know any names. And if somebody decides to be evil and shooting, Somebody could get hurt that shouldn't have, you know, nobody should be getting shot at. But if you're just out there and all you want to do is peaceably protest, let's say, abortion, and you thought it was going to be okay, but see, you're out there doing it amongst these hoodlums that was out there tearing stuff up, and, and the police decide we're going to shut it down, and they do use tear gas or somebody shoots at them and they are afraid for their life so they return fire innocent people are going to get ca- caught in the crossfire that's just that's how that evil goes i even saw that, um i yeah. i saw on twitter i think it was twitter someone posted um some kind of solicitation so some group was soliciting volunteers to drive um unmarked police cars but uh have clo- be clothed in police attire and 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 have and fake arrest protesters. So so the real pro, so it's basically just to get the protesters fired up and say, hey, you're we got to get out there. We need more of you guys because they're, they're they're arresting us illegally. Trump's administration is cracking down on us, and we need to fight back. I, I think there's dirty tricks on both sides that are just uh, there's a just so much manipulation. It's just hard to know what the truth is. Um, but I did love you got hey, Joe, your your summarization of that last topic was awesome. Same with you, Lisa. Um, I, I totally agree, and it, it, it is a, a fine line, and I struggle that with that line sometimes because uh, I, I do, I do want to uh, fight back and uh, do more. But at the same time, I feel like I must, I, I gotta, be, you know, 
do it within the spirit. Strike. Yeah, you not step yeah, on a Yeah, strike a proper course. balance. Right. 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 So, we do. We have to be that, careful uh, of that. The federal officers thing, I, I have seen that. Um, and it's, see, uh, that, that's the trick because on the one hand, with, with what we're seeing, a lot of these, I don't call them protesters. They're not protesters when they're, they're trying to burn down courthouses. Um, and right. I saw, I saw videos of these uh, insurgents um, uh, uh, like this one idiot was hiding behind a door waiting for either the police or the national guard to come out of it with a hammer. He was going to hit it, bludgeon him with a hammer mm -hmm. and he got, you know, God stepped in and uh, that guy, you know, he missed and they took him down. And they, they show us these images, I believe, you know, uh, in part, obviously, because it's really happening, but um, also because they want us to be like, yeah, get them. We don't care if those cars are unmarked. Mm -hmm. We don't care what's going on. We need to get these these monsters off the streets because, you know, they're affecting mm -hmm. real people. But it's dangerous because just as, you know, obviously they're going to they're going to show us the most monstrous people. They're going to rile up a monstrous revolt against against the average American person with these people that are tearing down statues of not that I love, you know, necessarily am, I don't really care about statues, but, you know, beheading statues of Jesus and um, um, burning churches and um, uh, 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 just attacking innocent people who are actually peacefully protesting, counter protesting, but they're going to show us all this because I, I mean, almost nobody, it's going to get behind this. I mean, except people that are so far gone that, you know, that they're not, you know, they're not reachable anyway. Like that's why I made that point about, you know, I, I don't like to, I don't like to conceive the idea that we've been racially divided because to me that would say that, um, and I know this wasn't what Jason was trying to say, but um, I, I don't believe that the average black person wants to see any of this cruelty done to white people or any, like, I don't believe that that's the average, because I, I don't get treated that way out in public. I don't get treated that way by black people. So I don't want, they, but they want us to believe that that's how, that that's the, the, that's how they would actually sow the division is by making us believe that with black Twitter, for instance, I, I, there's so many feds on that black Twitter. It's just, you know, it's a joke because they're, that's not the average black person, but they want us to believe that that's what the average black person thinks about America and about white people. And I don't believe that. Um, but they, that's how they try to foment this idea that we're we've been successfully divided and we're at war with each other and I don't I don't I don't think that most people want to see what's going on right now but they hold up these monstrous people this antifa type people blm these uh, marxists who said they want to destroy the family unit uh, the western prescribed nuclear family as if that's a white thing to have a mother and a father and a children um, that's that's just terrible <laughs> that blm says that on their own website but um, that way that, that we don't we don't we don't stay we don't make a make a stink when we see feds and unmarked cars ripping these people off the streets. Now, on the one hand, you know, honestly, at this point, when you see these violent insurgents uh, going to war with the federal government and with, you know, not just the federal government, they're going to war. I mean, they're yanking regular people out of cars because the belief is, especially if you're white, but I've seen them do it to a black person. I guess he was light skinned. Um, that they, I don't know, they couldn't, it was nighttime, yanking people out of cars. And these are not just, this is white and black people alike, yanking people out of cars to beat them up because they figure that if you're driving through the protest and you're not protesting with them, you're against them. And so they, they, they make sure that, that these people are so unsympathetic that we don't mind seeing their rights violated. But it's also... You know, it's true that at this point, if you're actually protesting and, and not um, not actually rioting, you're at this point providing cover for those who are, making it impossible for the police to really discern, you know, who to, who, who to, who to sweep off the streets and, you know, uh, who to leave be. Um, so it, I understand why they would be doing this, uh, because, you know, if you're in the middle of, a, of an, you know, an attack on the government and you're sitting there you know, carrying a sign and be like, I'm just protesting. Well, okay, use your brain right now because everyone around you is committing felony, <laughs> felony uh, vandalism and, you know, uh, you know, attacking police officers. So I, you know, you're going to have to go too, but we have to be careful because, uh, I, you know, like I said, that, you know, that <laughs> there's not a lot of people that support this. Um, uh, so they, they know when they, when they hold up Antifa, for instance, um, 
as the people that are behind all of this violence we're seeing on the streets that we're not going to we're not going to defend them we're not going to think that they deserve any sympathy but then they just like with the terrorists you know the muslim terrorists you know in 9 11 and all that they pull a switcheroo because they they get us to agree that those people don't deserve to have any you know due process or or whatever and um uh and then you know that those things are codified into law and then it turns out we were the terrorists you know we were the ones you know targeted the whole time uh so we we can't uh we can't allow things that are um unconstitutional to happen to anybody no matter how much we hate them <laughs> no matter how much they, they they deserve it because it will happen to all of us because you know the government is not our friend and and really at the end of the day they're after christians and all of this i see as wrangling to get things into position where they can go after christians the way that you know they're going after antifa right now absolutely that's what it all yeah that's ultimately what all this rebellion is about it's rebelling well, against God. Let me clarify my point from earlier, because uh, what what I was trying to say uh, exactly, Angel, was that they're trying to uh, divide us. I wasn't trying to make the statement okay, that we're yeah. completely divided. Because right. uh, you use that word completely. I'm not saying that at all. Um, okay. I also haven't experienced any racial hatred or, or, you know, people looking at me weird or anything. Um, That's good. Uh, I think that you'd asked me that question before. I have gotten some looks about not wearing a mask. Yep, that's what I was saying. They have divided us there, like successfully. Yeah. That's uh, not, you know, they, they've got people, out, you, that's where you're likely to get attacked. Uh, yeah, my point is the, the media uh, has definitely for years uh, been trying to divide us on racial lines, on religious lines, spiritual lines, that, that whole thing. That's been there attempt and political especially back back when i didn't understand that uh republican democrat are two sides of the same coin and the politics are uh a complete waste of time and we and that's a, a topic for another night um I, but i don't i don't think our votes count I, I i believe that anyone they want in office they'll put in office and, and they'll do whatever they have to do uh to get it, it it's just a huge joke to me but back when I under, when I didn't understand that, and I've I've mentioned before that I was a uh, uh, Republican, quote I'm doing air quotes, nobody can see Republican, um, and I used to get angry about the same things. A Angel, I was laughing quietly to myself when you were talking about the person you used to be, and you know, so, social injustice and all that, and and uh, getting upset about things that we weren't alive to be a part of, uh, whatever that may be, and history and all that. Uh, we wouldn't have uh, gotten along yeah. probably at all. <laughs> my my former right. self and your former self. Um, yep. I, it irritates me. It was me. ridiculous. You know, I, I struggle with irritation with some of these people, you know, like trying to ruin Thanksgiving. Well, it's not, you know, this happened and that happened. We should name it Indigenous whatever day or, or, or whatever. That, well, that's Brother like Chris, band -Aid let on me it. stop you there. Let me stop you on that point. I'd like you to continue, but Christians have been doing that stuff too. Did you did you notice like they would talk about the holidays? They would talk about Saturday being Saturn's day and Sunday and all this stuff yep. Sunday of uh, being ungodly. So then what well, it's like okay, I I don't care what their intent is. It matters what my intent is. Now maybe that is historically true. Maybe everything they're saying is historically true. Yep. But I give thanks for my meals every day so why would thanksgiving be any different and if i've chosen to use that day because we get we get it paid off it's off and paid to get together with my family and have a meal where we give thanks we're giving thanks unto the lord we're not even even i'll tell you the truth we're not even thinking about the history of what it relates to in this country we're coming together as a family thankful for the blessings of the lord and and focus on a, on that aspect. We're not even looking at the historical the uh, reasons that they gave us for that day. I'm sorry, you go ahead. No, I, I don't dis I don't disagree. Thanks every day, of course, of course, as believers, we should be thanking God every day. I'm just saying, and it's not just Thanksgiving. They've, they've been trying to ruin Christmas, and and yes, there are quote unquote believers that are trying to ruin Christmas because it's you know 
historically speaking, it's Saturnalia Day or whatever. Yeah, there all these things uh, exist. I'm not saying they don't exist, but for me, even Christmas, I know in my heart what what, what I celebrate at Christmas time. I celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. That's what I celebrate. Um, I believed in Santa for a short time when I was a, a, a kid. Uh, I understand that it was something my parents did for me to have fun. It wasn't to get, get me to worship him or, or do anything like that. So to me, it, it's completely harmless. Um, uh, but yeah, there's, there's uh, so-called Christians trying to take that away as well. And that, that, again, that's a subject for another time as well. I'm just saying that there's all these attacks and, oh, we need to do this and do that. What I was trying to say was uh, it, it's putting a Band-Aid on a huge wound and thinking, oh, this will work. Take away Thanksgiving and or rename it and take away uh, Christmas. Uh, to, to me, it's not even if we're going to try to solve the issues that we do have that do exist, that's not the way to do it. Uh, tearing down statues. What, what good does that do? You're just tearing down his, uh, some historical uh, thing. What, what are you accomplishing if you're beheading a statue? I mean, what what purpose is being served by that? Because you're not striking at the heart of of the the people that run this country. That they they might be irritated that like if they attack George Washington, I'm sure some some uh, somebody will be upset about that. Some of these other like little little town heroes and things like that, little statues and things. Um, yeah, I'm sure someone's irritated. But w what purpose is that serving? It, it's it's a bigger problem than just you know protesting uh well i agree with what angel said it's not protesting if you're doing violence and things like that that it, it takes it into another realm i agree with that for sure okay well guys i just wanted you to be aware because mike astutely pointed out in the chat that it is unlawful for the police to be in an unmarked vehicle, to stop you, to arrest you, that's unlawful. There are laws in your state that specify what the criteria is for the police to even engage you. They're not the police. They're the uh, Department of Homeland Security. So even Yeah, more I understand. But the problem is, is that there are, okay, let me give you a story. Let me give you a story that was out here. Um, they had where there was a per person had an unmarked car that had what we call disco lights, which are the police lights, right? And they were turning the lights on and getting women to stop and assaulting women because the women thought that it was a police car just because of the lights. Sure. Now you have the right if you're if you're going to be stopped to verify that that is a police car before you get out of it. One way you can do is slow down. A lot of times what the officer will do, sometimes you slow down and you put your hazards on, he'll pull up sometimes on the left to let you clearly see it is a marked vehicle. Um, there are uh, other things you can do. You can get on your phone and you can dial 911 and ask them, tell them where you are and ask them, say that there's some disco lights on behind me. I can't verify it's night if that's an, a, a legitimate police car. So what you do is you slow down, you put your hazards on, so you let them know you see them, but you can call 911 and verify. Do you have an officer right now on this road? They can pull it up, and they'll say, yes, ma'am, we do. Then you can stop. Because, you see, there's all kind of little tricks out here. I'll give you another story. There was... Uh, my a, a good friend of mine, co-worker, she was in her, her home like I'm chilling right now. And all of a sudden, about 9, 10 o'clock at night, there's a knock on her front door. A night, uh, uh, not even just a knock. It was like boom, 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 you know. So she gets up. She goes. She didn't open the door. She went to the window. She peeps out the window. She sees these two, uh, I'm going to call them cats, in this in these, those uh, blue jackets that they wear, it'll say police on the back. Mm -hmm. And it said, um, what's the ones? Not the parole. Okay, it said parole. So they said, well, we're looking for so-and-so. And they like muffled and garbled whatever name they were saying. And they held up a little folded piece of paper talking about we have a warrant. And she said, who did you say you're looking for? And they said a name. And she said, well, he don't live here. 
well, we have a warrant. We have a right to come in and search. And she said, well, first off, I told you he does not live here. You have the wrong residence. But she said, I tell you what, you give me the number to your police. No, she said, that's all right. I'll look it up. You wait right there. What's your names? And they gave her some names, right, as the officer. She said, let me verify who you are. Now, what you can do is you call the watch commander because anybody that's supposed to come in to make an arrest, they're supposed to notify local law enforcement. I don't care what department they are and let that watch commander know that there's going to be an arrest. So you, she called and verified and they said, we ain't got nobody. Nobody's notified us. Don't you open that door. We're sending a squad car right now. And within about five minutes of her doing all that, they were gone. Whoever that was, was not law enforcement. See, this is what I'm saying. This kind of stuff, though, is trying to condition people that I told y'all with these masks, secret police, people coming in, you can't identify them, that this is all setting up something else. And now here they go, scooping people up. There's an article in here. The man is testifying basically in this article. He is saying, this happened to me. There's an eyewitness account. They named the guy that he got picked up. And all he was out there, he was walking along. Now, I told you, don't be out there with that mess. Don't even be nowhere around it. If they got a protest and they cutting up, you make sure you are you a mile away. Because they scooped him up in this unmarked minivan. He said they had on military gear. They asked him certain things to see if he would incriminate himself. And he said, I I'm going to remain silent. They read him his Miranda rights. Thank God for that. And then uh, when he said, I want a lawyer, they just got quiet. They didn't talk to him anymore. And in about 90 minutes, they let him go. Never having identified themselves. Now, if that's not frightening, <laughs> he said he was terrified. So listen, I don't say this to scare you. I'm saying this to make you aware, beloved, that these types of things are probably going on. But here's the problem. Even if these were officially DHS, there are people that when they find out this type of thing is going on, they'll mimic it. So be aware, <laughs> be prayerful, put your angels out, rebuke the devil, because uh, Satan is busy, y'all. He's busy out there. And this is another thing. Try not to go out in late hours. This did not happen in broad daylight. So don't, <laughs> my dad used to say it this way, ain't nothing out in them streets after 10 o'clock at night but trouble. And that's true. They did a song about it many years ago called The Freaks Come Out at Night. Remember that. It is true. The devil's children roam the streets at night. So if you don't have if you do have to go out, don't go out by yourself. Groups of two or three are better than one person going out there. Jesus always sent his disciples out two by two. Don't go out in the streets by night alone. It's not a good idea. So, you know, be prayerful. I'm not telling you to be fearful. But we live in remember, Jesus said, perilous time. That means if, if you look up the word peril, that's dangerous, that's treacherous. So be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. And on that note, y'all, I want to shift and move on to something else because we're coming up on our break in just a few minutes. So I want to shift topics to uh, helpful helpful tips before we go to the break because I don't want to rush Brother Cripp's movie, uh, movie corner. I want to give him all the time he wants on that subject. Mm -hmm. So Sister Angel, what is your helpful tip? for everyone out there this evening? Well, it might not be uh, received very well by some people, but I've got, it really has uh, uh, made a difference for me. Um, I had been, uh, you know, trying to, you know, improve my diet because for a long time now, my diet's just been really empty of, of nutrition. Uh, it's, I, I have, you know, I have four kids and they don't all want to eat the same thing. So I'm, I'm always juggling like <laughs> at any meal time you know, uh, two or three different meals I have to make. And, uh, then, you know, for dinner, you know, it has to also be my, you know, uh, my husband has to like it. Uh, so I kind of just like find whatever at the store that I might eat 
uh, be it like English muffins or something. And I, I just don't get much nutrition. And I was trying to figure out something quick and easy that would be like really, and you know, and cheap, that would be really powerful, a, a really powerful way to improve my diet. And I came across sardines. Now, I know that might gross some people out, but um, it, they're really not that fishy. Uh, like I like, you know, anchovies and stuff. So for me, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're very mild, but um, as for as beneficial as they are, I would say anybody that has a problem just needs to get over it because they are, they have a very high nutrient profile. They're one of the single highest sources of, of, of like omega-3 fatty acids that you can that you can consume. And they have an incredible amount of selenium, which is something we do not get enough of at all in our diet. And uh, unlike most things, you don't have to eat a whole lot of them to get this to get the benefits. I mean, you can just eat a can a day and it'll make all the difference in the world. For me, um, I've been eating at all. Oh, and the other thing is for your uh, like for weight loss and stuff. They are extremely filling. Um, uh, one thing that I've had a tr had trouble with is that I'll, uh, you know, I'll, if I eat breakfast, um, I get really sleepy afterwards. Um, actually, I always get really sleepy after meals. And so I, a lot of times I'll go throughout the day. If I have a lot to do, I won't even eat uh, because I'm afraid of getting tired. And, um, so I, I tried, uh, you know, eat, it might sound gross to people, but <laughs> I've tried eating sardines for my first meal. And, you know, I put like a lot of salt on them, um, and, you know, like sea salt, um, and, uh, I eat them with capers, which by the way, are also quite healthy. I've come to find out they're flower buds. I never knew what they were. They are flower buds. And, uh, one of the only times I, I think we actually eat flower buds is in capers. And so there's a lot of beneficial things in them. Um, but, um, the uh, the sardines have made a huge difference just in the fact of my energy levels. After I eat a can of sardines, I am not sleepy and I'm very full for hours and hours. I'm not hungry at all. And um, I have a, a tremendous energy boost. And, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I feel like it's also been like a, like it's a boost of my mood quite a bit. Um, and that could be because I was deficient in a lot of the vitamins that they, you know, that they have. So uh, if you look online, it's actually because, because so many people are finding out about this, um, it's become really popular, especially people that are following like a keto diet or a paleo diet or whatever. Um, sardines uh, are, are like a, a natural, <laughs> like a food source for a multivitamin. Um, and that's very hard to find, especially for such a you know, cheap price and to where you don't have to eat copious amounts of whatever it is to, to actually get that effect. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you know, there's, I, I'm telling you they're mild, there's ways to incorporate them into your diet. If you don't like fish, uh, you know, or if you just really don't like the idea of sardines to where you really don't taste them, they can be cooked down into a, you know, like, uh, tomato sauce, um, to where you don't taste like a fish taste at all, but they just kind of give that umami flavor. Um, like I, I often will put anchovies in, um, in like my marinara sauces and stuff, if you crumble them up and, and cook them down at the base of the, the sauce, um, you, you would never know that uh, anchovies were in it. But, um, uh, you know, people also use them like with, it, with eggs, you know, fisherman's eggs is what it's called. Um, there's all kinds of recipes online. You can replace tuna with uh, sardines for like a, like a tuna salad, but it's like sardine salad. So if you if you can stomach tuna, you can definitely stomach sardines. They're actually a lot less strong uh, than tuna fish. Um, uh, they, they really are because I could never imagine eating um, just straight tuna out of the can. But I eat the sardines that way. Um, another thing I know people might get grossed out about the fact that there's skin on the sardine, but they don't have scales. Um, and they all, there's a little bit of bone now that they, they don't have any of the gross stuff there, you know, any of the intestines or anything, they, they clean all that out, but there's, the, there's, there's bones that are very small to where you don't even know that you're eating them. Um, and, uh, and the skin now that might be gross to some people, but it's actually really important because in our standard American diet, which is appropriately acronymed sad, um, we don't eat a uh, whole uh, meats anymore. We don't eat, the, you know, there's very few things that we eat where we're going to actually eat the bones and the skin as well as, the, you know, the, as the meat. 
And um, in that little tiny bit of bone that's, that's in the sardine, which, like I said, it's not like you're crunching on a big salmon bone or something. It's like completely not noticeable. Uh, there is, I believe, half of your daily value of calcium. And it's in the bone of the, of the sardine. So one can of sardine, uh, you get that uh, if you eat the bones and just a, a bunch of other uh, nutrients as well. But um, I would just highly advise that anybody that's trying to find a, a quick and easy way to really improve their diet and boost uh, also, you know, uh, like their ability to feel full without constantly snacking or to avoid that slump that you get after you eat lunch or breakfast or anything like that during the day. Um, I, I would encourage you to try the uh, sardines because uh, and you can look it up online. Like I said, there's tons of information um, about it. Um, and it, 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 for me, it's uh, made such a big difference that I really think it would be worth it, even if it's not uh, immediately appealing to you. Give it a try. Um, try pairing it with, you know, uh, you can also put them, you know, eat them with rice, like maybe some sticky rice and uh, uh, like soy sauce or something like that. But it, just try it because our diet is so uh deficient now uh today in modern day america and um and i know how it is when you set out to to try to improve your diet but it becomes so time consuming and expensive because to really make a dent you have to either eat a whole lot of something or um really stay on top of all like you know like produce or whatever perishable items and oh by the way although i'm very dubious about this idea that fish contains too much mercury now and that we need to to avoid it because there have been, you know, studies done where they've actually people have tried to verify that um, and verify, you know, mercury levels. And it has not, you know, uh, proven to be true. It almost seems like they're trying to scare us out of uh, actually eating one of the most healthy, uh, <laughs> healthy foods we can eat. Um, but the sardines are known to actually be so low in mercury, even in a can, that uh, pregnant women are encouraged to eat them. Um, so, but it's, it's a, just, a, it's like a very convenient way to improve your diet where it doesn't involve a lot of, a lot of hassle. Um, uh, and you, and because it's so, they're so packed full of these, uh, nutrients and benefits, um, it's really easy to, to make a big, make a big change in your diet just by adding one can of sardines to your, you know, to your, uh, daily routine, uh, per day. So. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are cringing right now, but try it. Just try it. Well, one thing I, I would say, um, the mercury, yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. Why, why would they be, uh, why would they be rich in mercury? You know, why just that, that, that compound or element that it doesn't make sense. Um, also too, is that uh, John Whitcomb who, who uh, Lisa and I talked about with K2. Um, he's convinced that one of the major causes of heart disease is lack of sulfates. And apparently the salt, like the uh, almost like the cartilage uh, type of uh, cartilage, like when you're eating chicken, for example, um, that's near the bone is, is rich in sulfates. So oh, really? Start, yeah, I've been starting to eat that. It's, it's hard. You know, it's that hard, chewy thing. Um, yeah. Oh, um, like so collagen. Yes, yes, yep. Mm -hmm. I actually mm -hmm. bought the powdered collagen recently. So did um, I. <laughs> oh, okay. You did? Yeah, yeah, I bought, bought that. Yeah. And I only recently figured out that, because I thought, oh, clump free. Well, anybody who's bought it, if you're having trouble, it <laughs> if you add it to your drink, and it seems like, oh, man, I can't drink this because it's all clumpy, just wait 10 minutes because it actually mm -hmm. goes completely clear. But I didn't realize right. that the other day, so <laughs> I hadn't actually used it. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Uh Thanks to you guys. Every morning I wake up now, I get a, uh, I put a, I get a 16 ounce glass, put a, uh, a thing of collagen in it. I put in the, uh, pour the chlorophyll mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I put this, this beet <laughs> crystals in there. Um, and it's, uh, it's not very tasty, but it gives me a huge boost. Awesome. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Well, you know, sister angel, um, a really good friend of mine, uh, one morning she said, I think I'm going to make breakfast for you. I'm going to make, uh, what did she say? She said, I'm going to make you some fish and eggs. And I was like, oh, fish, 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 fish and eggs. eggs. Yeah. No, she didn't say it that way. She just said, I'm going to make you some fish and eggs. And I was like, fish and eggs, that don't go together. She said, oh, yes, it does. And she said, she said, my mom used to make this every Sunday for us when we were children. So 
I said, okay, I'll try. I'll try anything once. So she just like, she made it for me. And ever since then, I've loved it. And I started researching it. And I said, do you know people have been doing this dish forever? It's called Fisherman's It's eggs. like the perfect meal. It's, it's it really good. Eggs are a wonder food. And so I, did she use, what kind of fish did she use? Tilapia. Oh, yeah. 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 Tilapia. And then, That's cheap and easy to, to yes. get. And then the next, so when I started researching it, because you know me, I want to know. I'll be like, how long have people been doing this and all this? And so I found a prep stater. She has a wonderful channel. It's a Christian lady. Uh, she talked about it. And I think when she made it, she was one of the ones that did it in the cast iron skillet and just put the whole thing in the oven and prepare the eggs whatever way you like. And it looked amazing. But someone else was talking about it with the sardines. Well, I love sardines. Yep. I mean, I'm not like a freak about them, but I'll have them occasionally. And when I added that to it, uh, she's not lying, guys. If you have a can, I don't know how big your appetites are, but if you have for the ladies just a can with the with maybe two eggs, you ain't gonna be you are not gonna be hungry. And then if you're yep. a gentleman and you do two cans and maybe three eggs. You're going to be good probably for the rest of the day all the way down to dinner, yeah. and you might not even want it then. It, it is very filling, very nutritious. Right, yeah. yeah, I've actually found myself kind of um, uh, like if I can't really get full any other way, like after I've already had a can, I'll go and eat another can because uh, it really makes such a difference. And sometimes I get annoyed by hunger because I don't have time to sit there and figure out what I want to eat because I'm very picky ever since I've been pregnant. Um uh, like, it, you know, I never lost the pregnancy appetite problem where you have cravings and that's all you want. You don't want anything else but what you're craving. Um, and I've had that ever since. Like, it doesn't go away after I, you know, after I give birth. So I have a hard time with my diet because of that because I have to really want something to eat it. And um, uh, having something that I can just eat really quickly and it fills me up and I know that it's going to give me what I need to actually function uh, is very convenient. And um, it's really, they're really not that fishy. Like, honestly, they're like, they're one of the least fishiest uh, fish you can eat, especially it's for something that's canned with the skin and the bone. It's amazing how mild they are. So uh, people like it put off by the smell or whatever, but uh, it, it's, it's really worth a try. And the fish and eggs thing, man, that would be, that's probably like the perfect, <laughs> the perfect food right there. I like Especially sardines. Especially if you get fresh eggs. Yes. Also, I, I understand mackerel is a very good fish, but basically uh, any fish that you want to use uh, with with the eggs that you, you like, any which way you want to prepare it, there's no rule, guys. You can make it. Just go watch a few videos. There's several recipes out there for different ones. Some people do it with mackerel. Some people do it with salmon. Some people do it with tuna. It's any way you want to do it. You pick the one that you like, whatever fish you love. And you make the eggs the way you like, whether you want them over easy or sunny side up or scrambled. It's totally up to you. And it it does. It really doesn't sound like it goes together, but it really does. All, all you really have on the plate is two proteins, okay? So they, they do work together. Oh, that now, just reminds me, growing up in the Keys, my family, we, you know, fished constantly. And they would, it grossed me out so much. But when we'd get a big mahi-mahi haul, uh, where you know they would we'd haul in like a hundred of them in a big school. Um, they, my granny and my dad they would t if they were pregnant fish they would eat the eggs. <laughs> it would seem so gross to me. Apparently it was delicious. I would never try it, but now I can only imagine how healthy that is. So like the actual like fish egg, whereas normally I guess it would be like caviar, but mm -hmm. in certain fish it's like more like it looks like an omelet. It sounds really gross, but I can, I would I would eat it now just for the health benefits of it. You know, the more you grow, the more you're just like ah, it's worth no, it. The older you get. <laughs> Crip said no thanks. No thanks. You you yeah, got me. A, you, you sold me on the sardines. I, I okay. So I just real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid, I I used to have them. I thought it was cool. You know, I, it, anything that other people said, oh, this is gross. I don't like it. I would want to try it. <laughs> and I tried it, and I, my mom would buy it for me occasionally. I haven't had them in, in probably 30 years. I haven't wow. Had them. So um, I appreciate that, actually. I, I'm actually on the keto diet, and I'm doing real well. It's really working for me. works better than... Uh, 
other I've, I've been success, successful on many different kinds of diets, but it doesn't last long. This is what I'm doing now. It's kind of like a lifestyle thing. And the keto thing, just uh, uh, avoiding uh, carbs, you know, uh, a lot of carbs has really, really worked. And I have energy and I feel healthy. It's really awesome. So uh, actually, Angel, that fits into my uh, diet. I could easily do that. I could have eggs and sardines together if I wanted to. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And it'll, your heart will be happy for it, too. Uh, you're, it's really good for your heart. And, I, and so, so I've been having heart palpitations. So um, uh, and Lisa had uh, told me about the selenium uh, you know, uh, solution for uh, heart palpitations and mitral valve defects. And uh, the fact that uh, sardines are so high in selenium, I have not had um, any heart palpitations since uh, since I've started eating them. So uh, oh, I still need that. to get a, a supplement. But yeah, yep. that's good. That's awesome. I'm glad that awesome. people are open to it. <laughs> ben, yeah. I'm looking yeah, at you. Guys, <laughs> I'd love for you guys to uh, try it and come back next week, I mean, one day this week, try it. And yeah. then let, let me know what you think about it because sure. I love it. Sure. Uh, but it did so sound it, unusual to me when I first heard it. Yeah, I remember my brother as a kid. He brought bring those home as a as a rebellious teenager, <laughs> and yeah. uh, he he was eating those like oh those look so disgusting. And I tried one. I remember being really salty, but overall I did I didn't ter didn't mind it terribly. Um, right. Are do, now they typically come like in, in a roll like you roll off the uh, tin basically. Yep. Yeah. And then they're dri they're, they're in oil, right? Yeah. Right. You can you get just, them in oil, water, tomato sauce, or Hot sauce. even mustard. Hot the, sauce. The, yep. That's right. The oil itself doesn't have any real benefit. You don't think? <clears throat> I've heard well, something about that people recommend them be the ones being packed in oil. I don't know if it's for the mildness of the flavor. A lot of times, oil will draw out a gamey flavor, but like you know, make it more mild tasting. But um, but I, I think it, anyway, it's good. But uh, I have heard oil, the ones in oil, recommended maybe just for the uh, benefit of eating the oil because you know even the Bible tells us that that's extremely healthy. So yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like. Yeah, the they have where they packed in olive oil too, so yeah, oil. you can pick. Yeah, which one? I wouldn't get the ones if they were in vegetable, oil, but I would get the others. Awesome. I've actually ordered. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Before I'm done, uh, just one thing. There is a there's a mm -hmm. there's a brand called Wild Planet, and they have like a, a whole bunch of different flavors of sardines, and you go online, and they're yeah. cheap. Like, um, like they're the same price as in the store, or slightly cheaper. But they even have smoked mm -hmm. sardines. So I have ordered like a pack of smoked sardines. Um, like, you know, it's like, I, I forget, like at least like six in there for, for like 20 bucks and they're smoked. And that would be a really good way to get around. If people think it's a little bit gross, uh, things taste a lot better smoked. Um, so, uh, you, you, you know, people could try that. I haven't seen them in the store, any kind of smoked sardines. So um, uh, it might be worth giving it a try online. Yeah. And one other quick tip. The supermarkets, they're usually not much more than a dollar, and they do often have them at the dollar store as well. So you might want to check there, too. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, yeah, guys. Old, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, long. Ben. Sorry. Uh, yeah, they probably have a really long shelf life, I would imagine, right? Yes, yes they do. Um, okay. That's the other great thing. And what I also, they're great to take if you're going to be traveling and you want to get something healthy and nutritious because they're already in a can and they have the pop top lid on most of them. So you don't have to. My grandfather used to do this. My mother reminded me this because I didn't know she it was, it was her father. And she said he was a freak for sardines, mackerels, um, uh, sand dabs and stuff like that. So he would take his sardines and put relish and mustard, a little bit of mayo, mix them up and get him some uh, Ritz crackers. And yeah. he would he say he'd sit there and find his favorite TV program and he'd be happy. <laughs> so yeah. because they really are delicious. I, I do love sardines. I just don't eat. I really don't eat them as often as I should. And I'm going to change that. But awesome. guys, I want to move Sardine on. Sardine revolution. Give, yes. I want to give uh, Brother Ben his opportunity before we go to break to talk about his helpful tip today. Okay. Yeah, I'm very much excited, excited about the sardines. Going to give it a shot. I, I don't really care what they taste like. I, tr I try to eat medicinally. Um, I mean, I, I, I have bad habits yes. with the next person. But um, I find, you know, if I if I eat medicinally, my, everything just gets in line. You know, I, I don't have the crazy... Uh, cravings for food because I know whatever I'm going to eat is not going to be very tasteful anyways. Um, 
But I also the actually the main thing I'm interested in is the uh, energy. Uh, energy, I could definitely use more energy. Um, uh, okay, I, actually, I have one other question. Real quick poll question: Rich crackers or townhouse crackers? Rich. I was townhouse. townhouse better. Ritz. Townhouse. He was a Ritz man. <laughs> I, I like that, and I like those bagel ones too. The ones that are like they're called like I forget they're. Not the not the ones that are shaped like a bagel. They're shaped like a cracker, but they're like a pretzel cracker. Those are really good. Ritz and milk. Whoa! Oh, I've no, never, never heard about that. Tried that. Oh, that's awesome. Ritz and chocolate. Oh, not Ritz. Uh, saltines and chocolate is really good. Yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. Okay. okay. Uh, so my tip is pretty pretty easy, but it applies to everyone. Um, I think everyone could benefit from this. Um, the first thing I'm going to show is a website. And it's a very trustworthy website. It's actually a colleague of mine who did this. It's very popular now. It got in the news about 10 years ago. It was huge. But it's a site called Have I Been Pooned or Pwned. I don't know how you say it. Pwned, I guess. It's a, it's a little, you know. Pwned, game. yeah. It's, it's when people accidentally hit the P instead of the O for owned. Oh, so okay. that's where it came from. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah it's some kind of, I do it with some kind of gamer, nerdy gamer, hacker thing. But it's a site called Have I Been Pwned. And uh, I'll put it in the chat in a minute here. But basically, you just go to this site. You type your email address. I'll put mine in here. This is one of my, one of my many older ones. So I'll put actormcse at hotmail.com. And you basically click this button, and it'll tell you all the major data breaches, even somewhat minor data breaches, in which hackers have stolen um Gotten into some company's um, website or their, you know, their their inter their network, and, and retrieved a bunch of uh, email addresses and passwords, and it'll tell you every time each each where each of these um, major um, breaches your, your ID or that email address was found in. So mine, for example, I've got, uh, you know, it tells you the date, it tells you all about like how many passwords were stolen, and and pe you know people sell these on the black market so they can get into the other websites. And so it just gives you an idea. Um, well, first of all, you could get an idea of how the whole history of every time that password uh, has been known to have been compromised, the ID and password, that email address. And then number two, um, you can actually free for free, just sign up and say, hey, alert me anytime my, my ID or my email address shows up in a data breach. So you get email and so that you know, it'll tell you what, what, what service that was compromised, you could go to that website and change your password immediately. So that's very important. So that that's one thing. That's the first tip I think is good to know. Um, to just to know what you've been where your password ID has been breached um, and uh, be alerted when it does become breached. Um, number two, and this is an easy one, but it's simple, but I, I, I just I cringe every time I sometimes people tell me like, Hey, this is my ID and password, and my ID and password. I use it for every every place, everywhere I go. My parents are like that. Approach a lot of people who are not technical are are, are tend to be that way. Um, and so, uh, I just want to give you a quick tip so that you can have a again. This is very basic, and I'm not saying it's the, it's the best uh, foolproof solution, but since if you're already uh, not savvy or too not you know willing to spend extra effort in, like into a password in, into invest in a password manager because there are products you could buy for example the that uh, you could get to uh, uh, so that uh, so that you could get sorry I get interrupted uh, that uh, so that you know a lot of people that aren't willing to are likely to change their password you can get password managers where you basically sign into this password manager and then it knows like wherever you log into a website what off what ID and password that's unique to that website offer that up you know whenever it needs it um, so that that's kind of nice but that's kind of pain in the butt too because you have to buy a product typically or get a free one but then it doesn't necessarily uh, work across different PCs uh, or you have to sync it or they might have a product for the PC but not the Mac and maybe not your phone so you want to have a for me I, I have a very easy simple solution that is a best practice and um, and that is basically is that as you can see on my screen here, I have a a, a, a password. It, it, it says "stop and reckon" basically, or "stop reckon." I, I that's a I always try to keep mm -hmm. a password to, a, a password to remind me of uh, how I should you know 
before I do anything, stop and reckon yourself dead to sin, but alive to God, for example. So I like mm-hmm. to have that as my password or you know something like that, just so it's uh, memorable and instructive. Um, but anyhow, that, that also I'll, I'll have a common string of uh, characters. And typically, uh, not typically, but always you want to have a combination between letters, uh, uppercase and lowercase, plus symbols. Like instead of the, instead of the T, I have a plus sign. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I split the stop and record with the, what's called the pipe symbol. Um, and again, I replace threes with E's and O's and O's with zeros. Again, I'm not saying that in and of itself is anything fancy, but that's like mm-hmm. the bare minimum you should do. But okay. here's the next thing is that what happens is a lot of people do is they'll have an ID, like a, an email address, like, you know, mine here is drmcse at hotmail.com, and then they'll have a, a password, and they'll use that password for their bank, for Spotify, for Google Hangouts, for everything they sign on into the mm-hmm. web, they'll use an ID and password. And the problem with that is if one of those locations is breached, hackers are not dumb. They know that everyone does that. So they'll say, okay, I got your ID and password for this one site. And they'll try it on everything else, and so they can break into all your stuff at once, essentially. And so, the it's, what I'm trying to relate here is that it's important to have a unique uh, password for every site. Um, and so, to, to do that, what I do, for example, is I'll have this password string called Stop Reckon. Well, mm-hmm. if I go onto Amazon, for example, what I'll do is that I'll put like an A in front of it for Amazon. At the end of it, I'll put an N. So now it's Stop Reckon, but it's unique to that site. But it's uh, mm-hmm. it's got something I don't have to, that difficult to, for me to remember. Like I go, say I go to Spotify for example. Oh, geez, what should my what my, what will my password be? Well, if I long as I have that common string, I can say okay, I probably made it S capital S for Spotify, and at the end I put a Y for example. Um, so again, you can do any kind of combination that have that exact pattern. But that's just a nice way of having an easy way to remember a password, <laughs> but it's unique to every site because that's. That's critically important because if that site's compromised, you're not giving up uh, your whole kingdom. Um, All right. So that's that's one thing. Um, oh, and then finally, I'll mention is that passwords are like again, they are the like the worst way of securing things, but it's still it's something that we do. We we still even use today. Um, but most websites now are major companies will offer a thing called multi-factor authentication or MFA multi-factor authentication sometimes it's referred to something slightly different than that but multi-factor just means it's two it's multiple factors so one factor would be your password and the other pass the other factor would be like your phone and the reason why that's that's highly secure is that if someone got your password that's not enough they also have to have in their possession your phone and typically that phone will also so you log into a site with your password and then if you're because that site knows you're multi-factor enabled It'll send a code to your phone, either through a text message or through an app on your phone. And then you also type in that, um, you basically just on your phone, click approve. And so it resets, it secures that you have to, for someone to get into your information, they have to know something, which is your password. And they also physically have to possess something like your phone. So that's why it's highly secure. And so whenever you get a chance to do uh, multi-factor authentication on any site, um, I would highly recommend you do that. Um, mm-hmm. There's uh, Google, Android, uh, iPhone. There are different um, uh, multi-factor authenticator authentication apps. Like, for example, I use one by Microsoft. It's called uh, Authenticator. It's on the iPhone. And I can put in there um, – I, I, I can use different accounts. Like I have one for my Nintendo account. I have one for Spotify. I have one for Google, one for um, OneDrive. And so all those accounts are uh, multi-factor enabled. So uh, I just open that app and say approve whenever I get uh, essentially a message sent to it when I after I log after I type in my password. So um, any questions about that? Did I go too fast? No, you didn't go too fast. No, you didn't go too fast. That was good. You know, with all these problems with the password, they should have some kind of way that uh, each person, like I don't know, like a. Some kind of chip under the skin, or, or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, brother Chris, that was great. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that that's exactly. You already know where we're heading. Well, it, you, you guys, if you lose your cell phone, you know you can be hacked, and all your stuff is on there, and all that. So, what, like uh, the old droid commercial, brother Chris, they don't they don't just want it in your hand; they want it in you. In you, yeah, they just come out and tell you. <laughs> 
That's it's what I was thinking you. with all these hacks, these big hacks and security breaches. It seems like it's all just just done to to drive us further to that point where we think it's ine- there's no other way. It's unavoidable. We've got to get a chip. We've got to have biometrics. Yeah. Right, because the 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 regular magnetic strip that was only a problem if you lost the physical card. But is and and then all you had to do is notify them, and hopefully you could minimize any kind of damage they could do. But the one with the chip, now they could just have a if you don't have an RFID blocker or some sort protecting it, they could just literally be sitting there with a scanner and just catch people walking by and scan it. It's actually less secure than the than the one they the predecessor with the with the magnetic strip on the back. And so that that's so people would go. Well, this isn't gonna work. Although, okay, now we got something else for you. Yep. <laughs> but Ben, did you finish your thoughts? Did you have any other helpful tips? Was that it? No, that's it. I just wanted uh, before you guys freak out. Um, I have, I know I have Angel's email address. I at least I have yours. I already put your your IDs in there to see if they would. Again, I don't have your password. Um, but it did that website, and you guys are actually came back clean. So that's impressive. Praise do mine. Do mine. Uh, I don't think I have yours. I don't think I have That is yours. impressive because I do use the same for everything. Uh, well, the yeah, ones I haven't no-no. used the same. Yeah, no, because if I have, when I haven't, I just forget. Uh, so I have to use the same one every time. Uh, I know it's bad. I know it's bad. But it, for the longest time, I never had like a debit card connected to anything. So I didn't mm. really care. You know, I didn't really know what all they could do other than like, charge up my debit card or something I, I i've been willfully ignorant about the risks of these things it's too much for well, me credit I'm cards, brain. any any charges made on a credit card if it's fraud you are not responsible for and you're supposed to notify uh whatever bank or issuer uh, uh as soon as you find out but you are not responsible when it comes to debit cards um I, it depends on what's in the mice type for the banks Sometimes they want you to be on the hook for like the first $50. But according to what I've heard from some consumer advocates, being that these debit cards, most of them have either the Visa or MasterCard symbol on them, then the same type of rule is supposed to apply. What you do is you call the bank and you say, look, fraud has happened with my card. They get their investigators on it. They're supposed to credit you immediately any amount that was removed from your account and then upon completion of investigation if they determine no we believe it was you then they would be you'd be going back and forth with them about settling whatever they thought that debt was but if they determine it was fraud once again you're not on the hook for that fraud so that's just a little footnote i remember that from clark howard who's a consumer advocate who talks about stuff like that. Well, in my yeah. experience, I've had them cancel my card just for ordering from a site they weren't familiar with. <laughs> right. You know? If you don't call them, there's things you can do too with uh, your either credit cards or bank. And that's if you guys know you're going to be traveling and it's not your normal pattern because that's they are tracking. If you go like, let's say you're in California like me and you decide you're going to go to Nevada or Arizona and you're going to be purchasing fuel along the way, they may think it's fraud because that's not your normal pattern of, of uh, getting gas. You, you normally get it around town in three or four areas, and now all of a sudden you're in Nevada or you're in Arizona. So you should call them ahead of time and say, I'm going to be traveling, and then you can tell them what state. You don't have to tell them all your personal business. Just, I'll be in this area so you don't think it's fraud. And they'll put a note in the account so that you won't get embarrassed when you go to use your card. And now you got to stop and go call them and verify it's you. You know, so that's just a little heads up. It's a tip that'll save you a little bit of uh, time and, and effort that you don't have to fight with. Brother Ben, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm getting the the donut here in the. Um... Yeah, I just saw that. It should come back right now. It, okay. It, yeah, that's fine. Will. More it's time for us to go to break if you're done anyway, so this would be a perfect time to go ahead yep. and run that, and hopefully it'll get back on track here. Yep. Okay, so everyone, after the break, we're going to come back, and we're going to be uh, talking with Brother Cripps. Uh, he wants to tell us about a movie. I'm not going to drop the title on you because I want it to be a surprise for you. And then Sister Angel has a very interesting topic. I, she was on fire to talk about it, very excited to talk about mud fossils. Now, 
This, I don't know a whole lot about. I know a little bit about it because I, I heard people talking about mud, the mud flood, and I looked into it a little bit, but um, I didn't go into great detail. And I want her to tell me how that's either related. I or don't not just to, just to make when, sure nobody. Uh, yeah, just to make sure nobody goes. Oh, I'm not listening to that. Uh, it, it, I don't believe it's related to mud, the mud flood. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So just, yeah, I was going to ask, but I, I was going to let you say that after the break. But that's all right. No problem. Because <laughs> I wanted you to explain um, how they're either related or not related. And then also, uh, we're coming back with Brother Ben and Q Anon, some very interesting things that he'd like to share with us concerning that. So please, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging with us this long. You've only got a couple more hours to go, and we'll be back right on the flip side of this break.
Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you for hanging with us after the break here. Hope you enjoyed your little break because we're going to get right back into it. Sister Angel <laughs> is chomping at the bit to talk, if I can use that phraseology, sister. <laughs> She's ready to go. Oh, I thought, talk. oh, were we doing, oh, I thought we were doing Jason's first. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't Did know. I, I didn't know who we're doing because he always wants to go early, so I didn't know if he. Oh, like, you know he, what? He has to go by three. Well, let me ask, brother J uh, Jason. Would you like to go next, brother? When we uh, talk about it's, it's totally fine with me. If 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 Angel's running to go, I I can wait. It, it it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter whether we do it now. I just need to leave by three a.m. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, you can go ahead because I got to make sure. what well, I have to. I sent in the pictures, but I want to make sure we've got them all queued up and stuff. To, okay. No to problem. Go. Uh, th this is a visual thing. I'll have to. No one will understand what I'm talking about unless I show the picture. So. Yeah, I think I did say brother Chris was supposed to be going next. Anyway, you're right. So, Brother Krebs, would you please tell the audience what movie you selected for us to consider watching this week and find out whether or not your critique is any good? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it is. The, the movie for this week is Unbroken. Unbroken. The Path to Redemption is a second tagline uh, name for this one, which I, I think is very apt for the particular uh, subject. Um, now, I'll just go over the angel said she hasn't seen it. So unfortunately, I mean, this this movie's been out since 2014. So it's not as old as some of the, uh, some of the other movies that I've reviewed that, uh, you know, maybe people haven't had time to see it. But what I hope is that um, in some of these movie reviews, I know that there are some people that aren't going to want to see it because it's just not their cup of tea. But this one in particular, if you haven't had a chance to see it um i'm not really giving anything away this is kind of a popular uh true character so it is based on a true story um i also did read the book uh before i saw the movie and uh they did a really good job with the movie there was a couple things that were different but overall it it uh, stayed pretty close to the storyline uh so i i definitely suggest it uh for everyone believer non-believer whatever uh, as far as language and stuff, there's a there's a couple things, not not too much. Um, if you have a uh, queasy stomach to see uh, depictions of torture, then I would definitely avoid that, or or, or mm. maybe watch it on uh, uh, regular network TV when they've cut some of the stuff out. But um, so the basic story story follows uh, a man named Louis Zapper, Zapparini. Uh, who uh, was an Olympian, um, he, he uh, track runner. So he, he had uh, uh, competed in the Olympics and won uh, uh, in track. Actually, interesting little tidbit that he was uh, actually in Germany uh, when Hitler was there at the Olympics there. Uh, he he tells, tells that part of the story. Um, uh, he was kind of a troublemaker when he was a kid, uh, but then his brother, his older brother, uh, got him uh, running because he was running everywhere when he was a kid. He was running here, running there, but sometimes he's running from you know truant officers and stuff like that. So he had a reason to run, and his brother thought, you know, you're pretty fast, and so he he got him focused on doing that, which uh, would later help him out. Um, and in the movie, he you know he, his brother, he's pretty close to him. He he tells him several things that uh, he replays back in his mind later, exactly when he needs it, and it helped him. Uh, have uh, determination and perseverance and things like that. Um, so uh, it follows his story. Uh, he, he enlists in World War II. 
uh, and he uh, gets on a, a B-52 bomber uh, crew, and that uh, plane gets uh, shot down over the uh, Pacific, and uh, he and three other guys get onto a life raft, and they actually are in the water for, uh, he's in the water for 47 uh, days uh, surviving. And uh, that part of the movie uh, takes up a lot of the movie, actually. And uh, I find that stuff very interesting, how people survive mm-hmm. things, another interest of, of mine. So that part uh, is pretty good. And I won't give any details away of that, but uh, he and another guy survive. But the way they survive is they get picked up by the Japanese, uh, which is very unfortunate. So they go to a prison uh, prison camp. So now he's a prisoner of war. And um, now this part of the movie really de- depicts the kind of perseverance he does have. And he uh, stands up to his captors and he defends other prisoners and you know gives up some of his food. He does all these things that show that he really cares a- about other people. Now, he's not a believer at this time. Uh, but while he was on the raft, he made it a little deal with God, you know, like some of us do, you know, God, if you get me out of this, I'll do this, this and this. Uh, and he said that if, uh, you know, he, he hadn't believed in God, but he said, God, if you're and I'm paraphrasing the exact uh, phrase, but uh, said, you know, God, if you're real and you save me from this, I'll uh, I'll follow, follow you, you know, basically is what he said. Uh, so God did save him. Uh, from the raft, but then put him in a a, a prison camp. So he wasn't too thrilled about that. He was like, well, this isn't exactly what I meant. But um, uh, so there, there was a particular relationship with the, um, the, one of the leaders of the prison camp and they called, they called him the bird. Uh, That, that was his name. uh, And he was horrible. Uh, His name was uh, Matsuro. Uh, Watanabe uh, was the guy's name and he was a miserable guy he just wore him out and uh, the more he tried to persevere and used his determination the more he laid the screws to him Uh, tortured him you know took rations uh, hard hard labor stuff he just really went after him um, and then, so they end up getting liberated. There's a lot in that part of the movie too. It's very, very interesting. And, uh, there's a lot of messages in there, uh, for us. Um, so he, he gets free, uh, from, from the camp and, um, he comes back to the States and he forgets about his little deal with God. He forgets about it. And he's an alcoholic and he has, uh, PTSD and, uh, you know, he, he's a decent man in general, but his drinking obviously causes problems. He has bouts of violence. He has all these things that are, are really kind of messing his life up. He has bad dreams, though, which you can imagine from the torture. Uh, and he has anger. This guy's angry at the guy that tortured him. He imagines killing him. Uh, he, you know, wishes that he, uh, could, could somehow do that. He even tries to, to plan to go to Japan and find the guy of all things, you know, if he was still alive and find him and, and do something to him. Um, the, these issues in his life, uh, get so bad, uh, for him that he, uh, he ends up going to Billy Graham, uh, crusade. Now, before I continue, I, I am certainly not saying that everyone that ever walked forward at a Billy Graham crusade is actually saved or anything, you know, walk on an aisle and all that. I'm not saying that, but this is the story that I'm telling uh, from this guy. So he, um, he, walks, uh, he walks down to the front at a Billy Graham crusade. Uh, he he uh, uh, makes some sort of commitment, but it doesn't uh, quite happen uh, overnight for him. Uh, but he what happens is he remembers his promise after the Billy Graham crusade. He remembers his promise that if God uh, allowed him to live, that he would serve him. And so not only did he, was he angry at God because he freed him from the raft, but then put him in a worse situation in, in some ways by being in the prison camp. And when he remembered that, uh, that promise, uh, he, he turned his life over to God you know, uh, according to the story. So then uh, he 
decides to go to Japan and they don't tell you what his plan is. Uh, in fact, as, as a viewer, an audience member, if I, uh, when reading the book, not the movie, I, because I had read the book and I knew what he was going to do. I thought reading the book that he was going to go back there and get revenge, even though he'd had this, uh, this change in his life. I mean, the things that he did to this guy, I would understand. I really would. I'm not uh, espousing revenge murder. Uh, you know, vengeance is mine. Say the Lord's, we shouldn't do that. But I would understand it is what I'm saying. I would understand it if he, he went uh, and did that. Um, but this is a very powerful part of the movie because uh, he goes to Japan. He actually finds out that this guy is still alive and he goes to talk to him and he forgives him which is huge and it moves it the old guy he's an old guy now at this point but it moves the guard so much and it doesn't go on to say uh what happens with him but in real life there's actually a picture of the two men together the the guard that tortured him and um louis together in the picture uh which i found interesting so um the the major themes in this movie um perseverance, determination, uh, things like that. Um, you know, sticking in there when he was on the raft, that helped him. Uh, his uh, uh, friendships uh, meant a lot to him. That's uh, I, I feel like that's a good theme. Um, one of the biggest ones, though, is uh, forgiveness. It was huge in this. For him to forgive the guy that tortured him all that time uh, blew my mind. Um uh, it, it definitely also is a story of redemption, which is a theme that uh, I respond to in any movie or book. You know, when someone's one way and they, they uh, change, they're redeemed uh, to another, uh, another way of living. Um, and uh, their, their lives are complete, completely different after the fact. Um, so if you're into that sort of thing, that is definitely in this uh, movie. Um so there's, there's lots of themes. Now, this is not one of those ones like some of the other movies I've done uh, reviews on where it's it's hidden. It's not really hidden. Uh, and, in fact, Angelina Jolie uh, is the one that uh, got this movie uh, running. And uh, interesting thing that happened, too, while he was he, – he's passed on now. Uh, but while he was still alive, they actually did an interview with him with Angelina Jolie. I found that interesting, uh, but he was excited about having this uh, movie uh, made about his life. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if he had a chance to see it before he died or not. Um, but despite who this is the thing that amazed me that that even though Angelina Jolie and I don't know what her spirit, religious or spiritual beliefs are at all. I just based on my understanding of her uh past lifestyles and things like that. I would be surprised to know if she believed in God. Uh, but in this, um, they didn't try to, uh, a lot of Hollywood movies, if they're depicting someone with beliefs, they make them look like, you know, hypocrites or idiots or over the top. Uh, generally speaking, that's the way they're depicted. And this didn't do that at all. Uh, it wasn't super preachy. Uh, and even for me, sometimes movies are, are, are super preachy when it uh, when it goes over the top. Um, but the message is uh, pervasive in, in this film. The spiritual message is in there and where you can see it. So it's not hidden, uh, which surprised me. Anytime there's a, um, a secular movie where they do that, uh, it's, it's kind of a shock to me. Um, but this is a good one. Uh, all the way through, not only is the message good, but the, the movie itself is very well done. The cinematography is good. Um, they shot at different locations. Uh, uh, you know, the scenes in the ocean are good. Um, the prison camp, everything in there uh, seemed very, very realistic and believable. Uh, just uh, great acting. The guy that plays, um, the guy that plays Louie, I don't remember that actor's name. He's not someone that I, uh, I can find it. Um, so all the acting was good. Uh, and that that's about it. Um, 
I would definitely suggest people see it if you haven't read the book already. Uh, like I said, it is pretty close to the to the book and everything. Um, he does have uh, a, a friendship with one of the guys that survived on the raft. And I won't tell you what happens to him. Um, you can watch that for yourself. Uh, okay, so Jack O'Connell. Jack O'Connell is the name of the actor that played uh, that played him in the movie. Um, did a very, very good job. And the guy that played the, uh, the bird, uh, the evil prison guard, uh, even though he is very unlikable in the movie, he does a great job at making you not like him. So as an actor, uh, I, I find that impressive. Um, so that's it. A uh, little bit shorter than some of my, my other reviews, but uh, you know, I didn't want to give too much away. Uh, but um, I would definitely uh, check it out. Yeah, I, I saw the movie as well. I thought it was really good. Uh, oh, I, was appreh I was apprehensive because I also saw that it was um, uh, Angelina. Yeah, yeah. It, but I think I think I got the chance to watch it for free or something, oh. and it was very very good. So I'm gonna watch it again. It was that, it was that good. Yeah, there you go. Well, you've convinced me, Brother Cripps. I'm going to watch it. Okay. I did have a couple of questions for you, though. Sure, ask me some questions. What was your favorite scene in the movie? Wow, good question. Actually, the forgiveness scene. Mm. That, that was my favorite. Um, now, there are several other scenes, like on the raft, this whole, the whole survival sequence was, was my favorite. Um, you'd probably think that him going up to Billy Graham would be my favorite, but that wasn't it. Because it, 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 it was a, a step on the path for him, but that wasn't what really got the job done. You know, I, uh, I, th I think that the forgiveness scene was so moving and powerful because they depicted all the stuff that were, that, uh, the guy did to him and for him to, to say that he's a believer and all that is one thing for him to actually meet the guy that tortured him and for him to forgive him as a human, you know, not God forgiving him, a human to forgive someone that did that to him, uh, I, I teared up. It was very, very powerful. That was a mm. great question. Well, then maybe you'll enjoy this next one. Okay. <laughs> what was your least favorite thing about the movie? Mm. Least favorite thing. Mm. That you found maybe the most distasteful or difficult to watch in the film. Oh, the, the, the torture scenes were hard to watch. I think it's hard to watch anyone being tortured. It's not not something I you know I wake up in the morning and go oh hope I get to see this today. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm kind of desensitized. I mean I, I've watched a lot of movies in my life, and this probably isn't a great thing to say. Um, I know that it's just a movie, so uh, uh, it uh, it doesn't maybe affect me in the same way it affects other people. And don't get me wrong, I've seen some some movies where it's like oh my gosh, I can't believe they showed that. Uh, Jen is exact opposite. She gets so involved in movies, even though she knows it's a it's a movie. She's she's totally sold out on it. But you know, um, yeah, the, I, I would have to say if I had to pick something, the torture scenes okay. were difficult to watch. But all in all, you thought the acting was was well done. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't think there was a, a bad actor in the bunch. Um, they even went back to his childhood and, you know, they had different actors that played him obviously as a kid mm -hmm. and his brother and mom and dad and stuff. Um, all those actors were good, you know, ev pretty much everywhere they went, every, every, all the acting was, was excellent. Didn't have any issue with any of it. And, and I do care about that as an actor myself and someone that does, uh, theater and things like that. Uh, that part does matter to me uh, more than some of the other things. Um, it can be a great movie, great story. Everything about it is good, but the acting suck and it takes me out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you want to, if you were going to rate this on a scale of one to 10, where would you, where would you rate it? I rate very few movies, 10. Uh, so uh, I would, I would rate it a nine. Okay. All right. Well, that yeah. sounds like a pretty strong recommendation by Brother Cripps. So I'm definitely, actually, I'm good. I'm going to watch it after we get done with the broadcast. Oh, there you go. Cool. Well, please, <laughs> you please, I'm sure you'll me. let me know. 
I, I will. I'll let you know. Thank you, Brother Chris. I appreciate that um, review. Oh, yes. Jason, Jason uh, what? So I'm curious about this Angelina Jolie angle. When you saw this interview, how did, what did she see? Like, how did you, because the things I know about her, I mean, if anybody's like an actual Luciferian Hollywood, I mean, she was kind of brought up that way. Like, uh, her, um, she, I mean, there's been recordings of her release where it's like she's talking about participating in like, like ritual abuse, like, you know, sex magic stuff. And um, uh, I, so I'm curious, like, how she, like in the interview, like what was her tell? What did she talk about? Do you remember? I, I don't specifically remember what she talked about, but I I, I can answer your question uh, in a way. She seemed like uh, she was supportive of him, yeah. and and she seemed very nice, and uh, didn't seem like the the religious beliefs uh, mattered to her, like the spiritual part of it. Uh, she mm -hmm. seemed on board with it. She, she didn't seem like, oh, I'm angry about this. And uh, so. Uh, Did it, she seem like she admired him? Uh, yeah. Just, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's interesting because she, um, some of the stuff that, that even like the recordings uh, she, that have been released and even just stuff she's talked about, she has sort of a fixation with torture, like masochism, self torture, sadomasochism. Yeah. And so part part of me wonders if she wasn't drawn to the story because of the not not necessarily because of the oh she's gross and she likes torture, but more that she's interested in the idea of what he overcame. Um, but I yeah. find it interesting that she didn't mute or ruin the Christian aspect of the film. You know, no. No. Um, that is uh, that's interesting and I, kind of encouraging. I would say she upheld it. She, she up, upheld the spiritual side of it. That's that's good, you know. I mean, I like I, I honestly, I don't. I get tired of these people that always um, talk about celebrities and uh, talk about them like they're dogs. Honestly, like they don't even want them to be saved. Like, like it's like the one group of people you're allowed to hold up for just unlimited contempt and just ascribe every evil characteristic to them. And, you know, to me, they're just all people. And if they are, you know, brought up in occult families, you know, I, I know from personal experience with people like that, that that doesn't that doesn't mean anything in terms of their, um, you know, their desire to uh to know the Lord or they're, they're just like everybody else in terms of, uh, uh, needing salvation and, um, uh, being able to be drawn by God. So, uh, you know, I've actually recently uh, been pretty surprised by some things Justin Bieber has been saying recently. Uh, very, I guess he's supposedly converted. And, well, uh, well, he's hanging out with the, uh, um, Hill, Hill song. He was. He broke with them. He like that. That was the last I heard. And then recently, uh, somebody, I guess KJ Osborne started talking about like an interview Justin had where he was. Uh, uh, he had, he is no longer friends with this guy. Um, and he was saying a lot of things. I was just shocked. Like it, it really sounded to me like he had had a very similar experience in coming to know the Lord that I had. So you know, but I, I you know, you can't say one hundred percent for anybody, but. You know, I, I hope that uh, I, I, I I at least would pray that if uh, Angelina Jolie, you know, her experience with this movie, I would pray that she, you know, that maybe it was something that God used to uh, to draw her uh, because she, her, her background is extremely dark. And, um, you know, that's 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 just a really interesting aspect of it to me. I do. I do want to see it. That's something that moves me a lot. These ideas the, the forgiveness themes in film. Because um, I'm kind of like a forgiveness junkie when it comes to my own life. Like I really, uh, I've always found it to be the most um, rewarding experience to forgive people that other people would think you should never forgive. It, it feels uh, there's nothing quite like it, and um, and so a whole movie about that is is uh, although the torture part, I don't usually my. I mean, I, I grew up on some pretty gruesome horror films, but torture is is a very hard thing for me to, to watch i've never liked the torture like the horror movies like like hostile and stuff where torture is the main aspect of the whole film but that's oh that's hard for me uh, i think that's funny how 
Jen gets consumed by the film and you're able to step away, it sort of speaks to like male and female, like emo your emotional nature versus sort of a logical nature. I, for me, I, I used to get really like in, drawn into movies or shows like that to where it, it almost became, I couldn't even enjoy it sometimes because I'd be so stressed out about what was going to happen to the characters. But then I started like, you know, as I got older, I, I'm able to separate now where I, I talk myself, you know, oh, this is just a film, but even, no matter how horrible it is, I can, I can step out of it, you know, and realize it's just a movie, but, um, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, I definitely, I, that sounds like something I might actually check out. I didn't know you were, uh, I didn't know, I, 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 I do hope you'll cover the road uh, at some point. Like, I think you were talking about that last night. Um, I tried, I, I, I tried, but um, it, it, uh, actually I was going to ask Ben to help with this, and I, I uh, meant to contact him earlier. Um, I, I, it's not available. Like, I can't find it available anywhere, uh, even to pay for it. Really? Like, uh, oh, it was available on Amazon if I signed up with. Uh, like, like oh, you show. wanted to rewatch it, right? I wanted to rewatch it, yeah, and I was was not able to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's something that that movie was totally that uh, had a huge impact on me. I that's weird that it's not available anywhere. I wonder what that's about. You know, it's that's that's kind of strange. I've never heard anybody. Uh, I mean, you know, even I guess you're saying like on on free on free uh, websites or something like that. Yeah, free or you know, I'm willing to pay a couple bucks for it, but right. I would I would have had to join. Uh, you can watch it on Amazon, but you have to to their um, like join Showtime or something. But I don't huh. want to pay fifteen bucks to join no. Showtime. I've already done some of the, um, uh, you know, how they let you watch it for a week or something. I, I've done right. that already, so I can't do that again. Well, Crips, I just Plus, found the road in basically full HD quality, pristine on YouTube. <laughs> so no uh, way. Yeah, I'm surprised. Even I'm surprised. Can you send me the link for? I, I would still like to do that. Can you send me the link for it? Sure. Yeah, I'd like to watch that again too. Send it to my ben. send it to my email, so you can also check it and see if. Uh, been used. Ben, can you put the link in the description for everyone? Uh, sure can. Thank you. I'll put um, Ben. I'll send you my email in the uh, private part on uh, Hangouts. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Yep. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I also thought you were going to discuss that too. I had all the pictures lined up, but no big deal. I can use it for next week or whenever. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, I uh, it's not. <laughs> okay, yeah. I will I do kinda, it next week. I, 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 got, I promise you. You can tell everyone that I'll do it next week for sure. That'll be that'll be okay. what I do. That. Yeah, I'm really impressed. I can't believe I, found, I mean, this is like perfect quality on YouTube. That's the thing, though. If you, I bet you if I go into YouTube, I won't find it. That's why I use it like right. an external um, web search engine, and they come up all the time. It's unfiltered. So Ben, excuse me. I think I said <clears throat> I meant I meant. Can you put it in the chat for everybody so they can mm -hmm. grab the link? Yeah. They don't have to Sorry, wait until tomorrow that, yeah. when I post it. No, that's okay. I I, I misspoke though. I didn't say uh, the chat. I think. Um, okay. Did everybody say what they wanted to say about the? Movie Unbroken. I, I have questions? nothing else to add. Did anyone else have any questions? No. Did anybody in the chat have any questions about the movie? Paula says she really appreciates you being able to point out uh, Christian themed movies for us to take a look at. She says she has difficult uh, time finding some good content. So. Oh, and I, I'm still going to do her. Uh, she wanted me to do a review on uh, uh, that movie, and I haven't watched it yet. Uh, I, I I will do that though. And what did? Oh, you don't you don't want to mention the name of the movie? No, no, we already talked about it, but I, I don't remember. Oh, okay. the, I don't remember the name. I, I, okay, no problem. Ben, ben might remember what it, what it was, but it's uh, Nicole Kidman narrates it. It's more of a documentary. Yes, uh, God. God has given up on us, or something. God has like given up, yeah, something like that. Okay, all so right. I haven't, I haven't, uh, 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 what's the word? 
I haven't forgotten about it. I haven't, mm-hmm. That's not the word I wanted. But I <laughs> it's on your to-do list. Yeah. It's on your to-do list. The word forgot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Forgot okay, the word forgot. Awesome. About it. Well, Sister Angel, are you ready for us now? <laughs> you ready to go? Uh, well, Ben, uh, do you feel like you've got the uh, the pictures uh, lined up? Uh, I, I guess you're going to screen share or something like that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just sc- scroll through them, okay? Uh, that's what they'll okay. see. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, if there's something where you need to linger on. Um, all right, yep. and um, and I'll just click on your – okay, I see what you're doing. Um, let's see. Sure. Yeah, give me a so second. it's going to be – all right, cool. Um, so basically what I'm going to talk about is this idea of mud fossils. Now, I don't know if a lot of people have heard about this, but um, it's really interesting. There's this guy that uh, he, he was, uh, I believe he was some type of geologist, and he started looking into these um, uh, humanoid looking structures and, uh, you know, like, uh, like mountains, right? Uh, Ben's going to, sh- you know, uh, have the photos up uh, in a second. Um, you know, uh, that, that, that are, that are uh, in an uncannily similar form, like a human face or like a whole human body that look like, uh, like a Colossus or, you know, or like a Titan, like a petrified giant. Right. Um, and he started, uh, uh, looking into them and even, uh, uh, taking samples and stuff from inside of them and finding that it wasn't just that the outside looked like a, the human form or, or even the form of an animal, uh, dragons, um, elephants, things like that, but um, um, that the inside of the structures, which I guess are supposed to just be like uncanny natural formations, um, and in some cases they're supposed to be like, you know, statues, like giant statues that were carved long ago that look ridiculously realistic. Um, and uh, he found even that it, it appeared that they what they had were like fossilized blood vessels and blood inside of them. Giant, giant. A lot of these uh, like like rock formations or types of rock that would be found around them that that science would have an explanation for or certainly, you know, say that they were this or that. Um, he could actually link back to exactly what it would look like if it were like a human tissue, uh, like maybe like cartilage or um or you know striated muscle tissue if it were fossilized and um and even uh when he would analyze it chemically he would find things like you know uh it consistent with actual blood you know that you know had been fossilized and um uh it came up with this idea of mud fossils which uh you know he he's a christian and um he links back to this you know idea somehow that uh well, I guess we would consider like Nephilim type creatures, things described in Greek mythology, um, actually somehow turned to stone. Now, um, not not that not that they were nest, you know, that they were fossilized over millions of years, but that they they were actually turned to stone. And um, I, uh, I now I'm not saying I necessarily go along with this theory. Um, but I, I do, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I wanted to pick everybody's brain because I feel like, uh, especially lately, we've been inundated with a lot of imagery from movies and television where there's going to be, there's like these rock giants or like these giant statues coming to life. Or if we look at, you know, Clash of the Titans, right? Um, I actually really love those movies. Um, they have, uh, uh, the, in the, you know, they, they use Perseus. Uh, I believe it's Perseus, um, uses the uh, the head of the Gorgon, Medusa, to turn these giant titan monsters to stone. And um, we see this, all, I mean, I, I feel like there's in lore, like you know, all types of folk- folklore, like about trolls, for instance. Trolls are said to uh, turn to stone in the sunlight. And I didn't realize that, you know, that that was part of the mythology until I watched uh, Troll Hunters by Benicio del Toro, it's like an animated series. And um, in that, the trolls, if they get in the sunlight, they'll turn to stone. And apparently that is absolutely what they believe in like uh, Norse uh, folklore um, up in Scandinavian stuff. They actually, you know, believe that uh, there's things like troll mountains and uh, um, uh, uh, actual trolls running around, but they, they believe that uh, trolls turn to stone in the sunlight. Now, I, I don't really know of, of a biblical, you know, uh, like a way to verify this biblically, but um, uh, I, I do find it interesting because uh, w- when Ben shows some of these photos, 
um, what you'll see, like, I, I don't believe it's possible that this is all by chance that these um, uh, formations look so much like a giant, like a huge giant, uh, uh, you know, for instance, like, like laying down on its side or, um, uh, you know, like being frozen, turned into stone where he sat. Um, but I, I do think it's possible that this is more God showing his handiwork, even down to the fact that that uh, that the insides of a lot of these formations seem to have like uh, fossilized, you know, human like tissues. Um, but I, I actually think it, it could very well be God himself, um, you know, just m more testimony that, you know, that there is a creator. Um, right, because these things would defy all odds of just somehow just randomly forming um, per the scientific materialist uh, worldview. But um, uh, Ben, uh, I I'm not seeing the photos, but let me know. Are you? Have you started them yet? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah, I'll get I'll get a projector so you can see them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I wanted to you know kind of jump off from there, like uh, hear what what you guys think. So I know that there's some debate about whether whether actual giants like what we think of as giants, you know, these towering, uh, you know, Nephilim uh, giants actually existed, whether they were actually that large. Um, you know, uh, Lisa and uh, Ben and I have at least discussed that, like, and, you know, it's possible that that's not literally what was, you know, they weren't literally like, you know, 30, uh, 30 feet tall or, you know, even bigger than that, 500 feet tall. I've heard some pretty crazy uh uh, uh, projections about how <laughs> how tall they might have been, but you know I don't rule it out either. But I I, I, I do think that e either way, no matter what view you take, it's really um, beneficial to look at some of these formations I'm talking about. Uh, even also what we're told are statues, like giant what they call a colossus, which is like a a statue that's you know the size of a building um, that were supposedly created back in ancient times. Um, I struggle to understand how some of these things would have really been done. I, I don't really believe that it would be possible for a human to carve something like a whole human form um, that large, like with a chisel, you know, and a hammer uh, and getting perspective. You know what I mean? Like if you're on a giant, it's one thing to have like faces carved into Mount Rushmore, which by the way, apparently they're not quite as big as, uh, as they look in photos. Apparently, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard people say it's smaller in real life. It looks a lot smaller, but um, it's one thing to, you know, maybe do faces that are coming out of a mountainside, but these whole bodies, I, I still don't understand how you would, how you would be able to be on this giant rock and, and get any perspective to where you could make it so accurate. You know what I mean? Because you're just carving this tiny little, tiny little, uh, you know, uh, inch at a time and somehow you transform it uh, to look to you in perfect proportion you know, where you zoom out, you know what I mean? It's, it would be like trying to, to zoom in super, super close and, um, um, and, and draw like a, like, you know, like a face or, you know, the human form, um, uh, centimeter by centimeter where, you know, and you're not even able to zoom out because you don't have the technology. You don't have like a helicopter to, to go hover above and see, see how you're doing. Um, so I don't really understand how some of this would have been done. But um, I'm not saying it's not possible. We could have had technology back then that we're not even aware of. But um, either way, uh, whether they are actually fossilized giants somehow, um, that, that might have happened either like with some sort of, you know, like instantaneous turning to stone or, or perhaps some, some uh, consequence of Noah's flood. I'm not really sure. Um, or if they're actually just, you know, this God peppering throughout creation just more and more undeniable evidence that there's a creator um, who created man. Um, and, you know, obviously, I mean, people who, who believe it's all just evolution and it's all, all random. I don't know that there'd be no way to explain why, uh, why a mountain would be in the shape of a sleeping human. Um, and uh, why, when you go inside of it, <laughs> it would have, you know, the, the tissues, uh, the tissue structures of a, you know, of a giant human, but I, but I could see God doing that, right? Um, God just, you know, testifying that it's not that scientific materialism isn't uh, isn't the uh, accurate worldview. Uh, but um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I wanted to hear what you guys had to had to say about it. I, I have a feeling at least 
uh, Lisa and Ben will have <laughs> quite a bit to say on the matter because we've talked quite a bit about, you know, the idea of the Nephilim and giants in general. Um, but this, this little bit of, uh, this little area of research always interests me, this idea of these uh, petrified titans, um, especially with the dragons too. I'm not sure if there's going to be any on screen, but um, um, I, 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 you know, I think a lot of the, the animal uh, uh, formations are pretty cool too, so. Sister, I'm not sure what I think about it. I mean, I can't deny, as I'm looking at these pictures, and I have seen some of these before, that, that they are definitely humanoid in shape. I mean, I can clearly see the faces and outlines of bodies. If it weren't for the fact that you're saying that they're saying they've tested, went in, dug into some of these things or whatever, and are finding what looks like how did you word it? Is it molecular structure? Like or? Yeah, like petrified tissues. Like, um, so basically, you'll have something like the, the size of a telephone pole, uh, like a big chunk of rock, but it's actually, you know, down to the minute detail, exactly like what the, the striated muscle tissue would be like in that area of the body. Um, it's really interesting. Yeah, see. Um, I don't even know what to say about that because he. I would have just said, oh, they probably just look like, you know, I mean, because you can see faces. You know how you when you're a child and you see faces in a curtain Paranoia. or a bedspread. OK, thank you. Ink spots. OK, OK. But right. um, when you say that now, if it's true, then there's some there there. I mean, if it's true, if that is indeed true, that they have tested this stuff and it's got some type of blood and human origin blending whatever it is that is something that was alive once how the do you argue with parks. that yeah, yeah like the guy his his youtube channel is like mud fossil university and um the component parts of like 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 of, of what's in blood like the the inorganic parts will be consistent in these uh in these samples according to him now i'm not saying that there's like this huge a bunch of scientists that will verify this but um, but uh, I, I, you know, he, you know, he does uh, claim to be a believer. This this information is what led him to be a believer of uh, having been an atheist. So um, uh, I, you know, I, I think it's interesting. I, I don't want to rule it out because uh, also just some of these um, formations. Now, I'm not I, I still haven't been able to see. Oh, there it is. Now, some of the formations are more convincing than others. But what do you think about these giant statues, too? Like these colossal statues. I don't know if we've seen any yet because i haven't uh seen all of the yeah, photos they, that have gone by uh, yeah um, they, he's shown some go ahead ben um well i was gonna say um uh so Adrian, i know what you're talking about the evidence that people provide um and the photos you gave, gave me to show uh and the one i'm trying to search for additionally i'm not finding a whole lot that that was similar to what i was thinking right was with, where me it was either. actually yeah, I know. Uh, it's weird. It's like, what, well, what's weird is like they're on YouTube, but I can't find individual images. You know, I can find videos. They but scrubbed not them. It's like they scrubbed them because they used to be like there. I, I used to be able to go and scroll through Google Images and look at all that stuff. Right. And now well, it now it's nowhere. Right. So uh, um, a couple of thoughts. I'm gonna I, I, I'll just say them all out right now because I don't want to forget. We can kind of go back and visit. But um, one thing. Uh, I, you know, I know this sounds controversial, and I'm not saying I be, believe it. I'm just saying this is a – I believe it's absolutely a possibility, <clears throat> and that is, you know, people say, oh, um, you know, when the sons of God came into the dollars of men, uh, they gave birth to giants. Um, but I believe that whole thing came about about them being giants is that the word mighty man was uh, – when it was I believe when, when the Septuagint was created and uh, translated by the 70 Greek um, – uh, or, or seventy uh, Hebrews or Jews by the um, uh, the Greek uh, dynasty to translate the Hebrew scriptures into Greek. I believe the word they translated "mighty man" was um, "giant," "gigantes," um, and so I think that might be where it came from. So uh, again, just thinking out thinking out loud here. I'm not saying I've, I've even studied this at all that much, but in the New Testament or the, uh, you know in the Genesis, it talks about. Genesis 6, it just says mighty men. It doesn't say giants per se. And so the other scripture people used to, to support that they were giants is, I think, uh, I think with the Joshua, it might have been, where they go out and spy, Caleb, uh, um, Joshua spy, and the other people come back 
not th- that were spies uh, that were not Caleb and Joshua. They came back and it says they gave them an evil report. And I, I, I kind of thought initially like, evil report just means they, 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 they basically were uh, talking down and saying like they made it sound like the situation was so dire that God was going to bring them into a land that for them to be consumed and destroyed by giants, essentially. But again, they, and they said things like uh, we were grasshoppers in their sight. Uh, they were tall as the cedars. And again, it's an evil report. So how evil was it? Was it just a like a a, a blow to to deflate their confidence in God, or was it really a, a, a truly all 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 a lie? There was nothing there. But they they knew about the uh, legends of the giants in Genesis, but that they kind of extrapolated that and said, "Oh, God's sending us into this land to be devoured." Um, so I think that's really, for for me. I think those are really only the two passages that people can really reference. I think. Um, to, to support the notion that they were giants. And there are history, historical records of giants as well. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just holding out the possibility that there weren't necessarily giants. In, in, in maybe uh, giants in respect of Jews. In fact, I, I my understanding is that Jews, uh, historically, uh, around you know biblical times, they were pretty short people, like me. I think that like the average height was like 5'4". Um, so uh, pretty much anyone else would, pretty, would be a giant to them. Crips would be a giant to me. Um, but watch out, I'm David. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, so the other thing too is that some of these um, some of these pictures are, are absolute fakes. I mean, they're, they're some are outright fakes. And I, yeah, I get, of course you're yeah, going to see. Yeah, I've them. noticed some of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, also, too, some of these Roman gods. Uh, so these these statues you mentioned about Roman gods and whatnot. You know, I, I always found it interesting. Like the the, the Romans adopted the. Greek pantheon to some respect, but they gave them different names. And I and uh, I know the Freemasons have said in the past. One notable Freemason said at one time that basically all ancient religion was essentially um, a, a packaged message. So like uh, it was like almost each god was like an element to magic. And then when you go, when you under, if you a, a, the true adept at that at that magic would know, okay. This god does this, and they would pair different gods, and they could read between the lines in terms of what the relationship was between these gods and what their act activities or um, propensities were, and that that was really a, almost a magic spell for an adept who studied that to implement that type of magic. Um, and I, I think there might be some real truth to that, where the, the priests had that secret knowledge, but to the you know to the masses that just wanted to buy a little idol for the house or whatever, go to you know go to bow down to Artemis or whatever they 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 gave them like led them to believe that they were these were real gods but in a sense they were gods they're just kind of they're demons um also finally is um you know a lot of people look also look at the mud flood they talk about like devil's tower that's so that's the uh tower that um close encounters with the third kind was filmed at and uh, a lot of people think that's like a, a big tree trunk um I, 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 when I look, when I look at it, I think it's, oh, yeah, I don't do buy into that tree stuff. Okay. Um, the, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's that, that, that trend that said no, no force of flat earth. Um, I think Devil's Tower, after I studied it, I think what happened, it probably was a, a volcano, I think, at some point, uh, that, 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 uh, you know, that sprouted up, uh, like a pimple basically after, soon after the flood. Um, and a subsequent, wa- so it, it, it formed as a volcano, the ash, it solidified, and then all the outer shelling of it was washed away by subsequent flood activity. Like, I think the flood was catastrophic, and it was, like, really dynamic, where continents were, you're getting layers upon layers. So there was one big violent event, but the aftermath was, like, hundred maybe 100 years or more of water going back and forth. Like, in fact, the Grand Canyon, I think, could be best explained by a post-flood lake. Uh, dam bursting, and there's a guy who does a really good research on that. Um, so, um, and, oh, and finally, uh, there's there's this one guy I saw, and he did he did on YouTube. He I think he might be the expert, you know, the foremost voice on this is that of the mud flood theory. And I don't think he was a creation a, a believer, but uh, he would he basically found some mountains and things like that that looked very uh, much like elephants and things like that and it, it, they definitely did look like tissues and things like that um it was very ornate unstructured uh uh striations of rock that were really interesting um 
and but uh, and around but around that that mountain, he would basically pick up every rock and say, "Oh, this is a heart. This is a kidney." It, it, it almost got ridiculous that like he's going too far with it. Um, but it, I do see that there's some things that are, are really compelling. And so for me, my initial thoughts were maybe it's like, um, it, it, for me, I thought it might be like something like, uh, like you know, when 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 nine eleven happened. There are people that took pictures of, of supposedly like the de- a devil's or a demon's face in the smoke. And somehow I, I wonder some of these rock formations that look like uh, particularly like men or mankind or some kind of godlike creature. Uh, I wonder if they're like if some kind of uh, I don't pretend to understand the, the spiritual world as well as, as I wish um, in its interaction with the physical world. But just as that, you know, maybe the, maybe at 9-11, for example, the smoke looked like a, a demon or whatever. Maybe after the flood, some of these rocks were near formed. Uh, you know, it, it's almost like these guys were it caps. I don't know if their spirit or some kind of spirit was captured uh, in the form of rock structure. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's interesting. It was, it was, it was, you know, the flood was related to judgment and a lot of these rock formations, some of them look like, um, ancient creatures, dragons, and, uh, and like Titans almost. Mm-hmm. Brother Cripps, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? You've been quite um, silent. Oh, well, no, I just, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> Just, just listening. I, I, you know, I'm a good listener. People tell me so. I, I, uh, uh, just listening. Um, I, I have looked a little bit into the mud floods and things like that, but I, I haven't been exhaustive. But mud fossil, but mud fossil. Mud fossil. I, oh, yeah, sorry. yeah. I, I think no, no, no. I just, I don't actually know much about the mud flood. But the, oh. have you looked at the mud fossils? Uh, the I have not. Where, I Okay, have not. okay. So I'll, I'll definitely uh, check more into that, but, um. Uh, I, I I trust you, uh, Angel, that when you talk about something, you've done the research on it. But I I don't know enough about it really to. I, I find it interesting. I find it absolutely. What do you think about giants? Oh, I know giants ex- existed. Yeah, I've looked. Do so you believe there were large, like really large giants? Oh, absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Go, well, uh, okay, go on. Tell me, tell me some of the. Yeah, because I'm kind of torn on the subject, and I, I, I what would you say is most convincing um, evidence uh, for you that that that's what the Bible's referring to? Oh, uh, uh, just the, the bones that they have found. I know they've hidden a lot of those, but th- there's there are pictures that exist of uh, people next to bones that they found, extremely large, uh, large men. Now I don't know about the size of a mountain. I, you know, I, I don't know if they were that big. Uh, but I believe what the Bible says. So uh, uh, in this particular case, I <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't found evidence from the world that, uh, that 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 shows that yeah they were as big as a mountain. Um, but there's some compelling evidence. You know the whole tree thing. I kind of looked into that a little bit. You know that that trees were way way taller than they are uh, now, and they all got cut down or whatever. Um, rock formations, rocks that look like the the stump of a tree that that exists, like that happens. There are uh, striations and patterns and stuff on some rock formations that look like it had been a huge tree. Um, but I don't know if that's you know a coincidence or or not. I I just I, I just don't know. Right, right, right. Now I I didn't mean to say I don't think that there's any there were were larger trees because. What I mean is the idea, like this, no forest on a flat Earth thing. I don't, I don't like, I don't really like that documentary because I don't even know what they were, what they were talking. Like that, the, the title was bad. Like there's no real forest, but I think they meant relative to how they used to be. But um, um, uh, you know, to me, like they talk about the Carboniferous period, um, in, in fake science, right? Where where everything was supposed to be larger, like like dragonflies the size of a cow and all that. But it, 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 I think that there's a possibility that that might have been true if um, oxygen levels were different. Um, um, I mean, I have seen evidence where I think that that could be plausible. Word would have been a lot larger, perhaps before the flood. Um, I don't know if Ben, you're you're pretty big into that kind of stuff. Have you ever thought about that? The Carboniferous period, be, you know, yeah, being a uh, yeah, I, 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 I spent a lot of time studying Lois Flood for a while and all the different theories and what the environment might have been like. And, um, 
you know, it is interesting. Like I, I do believe there's are, you know, pteranodons, ter- um, you know, large, uh, very large evidence for very large um, uh, flying reptiles or uh, even birds. And, and there were you know, just even the plant life was in, in many respects, just giant. Everything, a lot of things were more uh, robust. Um, you see a lot of lot, like j- sloths that were the size of, you know, uh, cars. Um, and so I think, I, you know, I almost wonder sometimes if, if during the flood, if the earth was just so much you know, more vast in size and it was just teeming with life. I mean, you just o- over the top, even more now, it were just, you know, just jungles and just teeming, teeming with life. And somehow during the flood, the world didn't shrink a little bit, you know, it's like, like the snow globe kind of caved in and, and, and I, I don't know, it just, well, just the land mass because of the waters rise. That's true. And, and, and you'll know, like, for example, a gold goldfish, a goldfish you buy in the supermarket, it, it's mostly limited in its size by the tank, but goldfish, you know, if you have a bigger tank, they will grow quite large, like koi's, for example. Um, so size um, uh, can make a uh, you know is, is is very flexible. In fact, that's a um, brilliant point. Another one too is that like a lot of pygmies. People have studied pygmies. Uh, some creation uh, scientists, uh, real scientists, um, have studied pygmies and, and the pygmyization of, of species, like having uh, uh, the people you know pygmy pygmy people pygmy hippos. It's interesting. A lot of the places where those pygmies appear, everything on that island is pygmy. And they find that it doesn't take a long time for that to happen. Just a hundred years or, or less, they could see a r- r- radical uh, miniaturization of the species. And so I wonder again if the flood, if before the flood, the Earth was just so so much bigger, so much more oxygen. I don't know if uh, buoyancy was differently back then. I, I just don't know. I don't think we, I don't think anyone knows well, jack, jack squat about any of this stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, I, for a fact, they, like if, if they they have pictures of uh, like. Uh, in a barometric chambers where um, tomato plants, grow, yes, and they grow giant like pumpkin sized tomatoes. Um, so, all kinds of factors. Well, Good, I- I'm sorry, I was going to say that there, there's a theory that there was more carbon dioxide in the air back then, and that that affected the growth of not right. only plant life but also, uh, in particular, reptiles and other creatures as well as man. So I, I don't know if you guys have looked into that theory as well. The Carboniferous period, that's why they call it that. Is okay. The, um, the, yeah, that the, 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 it was carbon, like lots of carbon, basically carbon dioxide, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I, 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 that's what I, because there's something about um, like insects, for instance, that there's the way that they breathe. Now, this confused me even when I learned it, so I'm just going to kind of butcher the explanation, but they breathe through these like tubes that are kind of on their, um, I think they're like on their thighs yeah. and something, something about the oxygen levels, like, like, uh, they're not able because of those tubes and the, the way that they, their size is capped off by the, the limit to which the tubes could reach the surface to absorb the oxygen. So something about having more oxygen, uh, would enable them to like, like a higher oxygen concentration would enable them to grow larger because I guess they, their their the tubes wouldn't need like they would be more efficient or something like I, 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 like I said it was confusing when I learned it but it, it's like a, a, a it's something that makes sense to me why they would um, be able to grow larger um, so much larger uh, uh, to where you know we have seen like fossilized uh, 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 I guess we call them insects or invertebrates. Um, um, that uh, are so much larger than what we think, you know, is like uh, what we're likely to see today um, based on uh, uh, different oxygen levels. Or I, I'm not really sure. Like, I thought it was the higher oxygen content, but they call it the Carboniferous period. So it might be like more carbon equals more oxygen because the plants can produce more. Maybe that's why uh, that's the link there. But uh, one thing I wanted to ask you too, Ben, is um, the thing I would think is weird, and I'd like to hear what Lisa has to say about this. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. It seems mm-hmm. weird to me that the context, if they say there were mighty men, men of renown in the earth, of the, like if that's what he, that, that was meant, was meant um, in the earth in those days and also, also after that. Because, I mean, that seems like an obvious statement to make, like they were powerful 
men in the earth in those days and also after that it like it makes more sense to me if it, they were talking about like actual giants do you see what i'm saying ben um I, no, I don't understand what you're saying. I, and I, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I didn't pick your point, get your point, but I will say this. Um, uh, I, I'm not saying there were giants. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, I don't think the case can be open and shut. I don't think we can be dogmatic about it um, because I don't think there's a oh, ton I agree. of it, Well, here's, here's another thing I kind of thought about too is that um, I don't have, I probably, I'm not going to remember all the parallels, but I, I, one thing I'm good at is pattern recognition. In, in particular with scripture, I'm really good at pa- recognizing patterns. In fact, whenever I read anything in scripture, I go, okay, where can I link this to? Um, and, and that's how I think God wants us to do that. But um, w- one thing I saw with Saul is, okay, well, in Canaan, God called it, you know, the, before they conquered the land of Canaan, it was uh, a land that devoured its inhabitants that uh, had, um, potentially giants in there um and they called them the last of the uh Rephaim, i believe um or agabashan was um and again i the the i see a direct parallel to the scribes and pharisees where there were mighty men they seemed untouchable they were godlike divine they were godlike to the average person because they were so much more righteous in, in, as they thought and so they were quasi divine uh, having the law and in, in, in the um, and so, uh, I, I, again, I see the parallel there, you know, the Pharisees were mighty men in that time. They, they wielded the law over people and made people, you know, twice the son of hell, put them in, putting them into bondage, not lifting a finger to help them, but just, you know, putting more burden on their back. And uh, Paul also makes the illusion that, uh, you know, if you bite and devour each other, that's what the law does. It bite and devours, um, cause it, it it's, it's cannibalistic and that's, that's why I believe Again, another parallel to the land before it was conquered. Is they said it was a land that that would devour itself. So it's kind of spiritual in the in the uh, in, in Jesus' day with the Pharisees, but maybe for physical uh, in in the time of ca- uh, the conquest. Um, and so, because again, maybe I'm just going too far with this, but but because there's not the the scribes and Pharisees were not tall in stature per se, but they were tall in stature in terms of people's view of them um that perhaps maybe the people that were that were in Canaan at the time were not necessarily uh giants uh, they very well could have been they very well could have been i've done a lot i've done a lot of research into that and well you do see ancient cultures uh, i've got you know uh, uh, quotes and things like that i can pull up about the egyptians talking about these people like the zamzumin um uh the Rephaim, the anakim um uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff there that it, it's attested through other history. And even, even in Jesus day, I believe um, I can't remember who the Caesar was at that time, but Josephus talked about him, that this guy and, and the soldier was like nine feet tall. Um, and so in, in that respect, I, I just don't tend to think they would, would get much more than like 15 feet tall, but, but uh, what were you saying? Uh, at least uh, angel, I forgot what, uh, what you're saying about what, uh, about the fact that, oh, that they were giants. Well, I, again, I, I, I was wondering today. This is going to get me in trouble, but I don't care. Um, you know, are the are the you know, says the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and also after that. And I've 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 read someone who someone who I who has a you know studies a Hebrew very deeply. He believes that that could also be translated instead of also after that, but but basically whenever. So like you saying that was the first incursion. And then there were potentially one or more incursions after that. So whenever the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and I wonder if that's still going on today. And these mighty men that we see, quote unquote, these a lot of people that are that are are celebrities, and uh, they, they have no conscience, you know. And I think part of the reason they're mighty is they have no conscience, and so they're able to do things that you or I would not be able to do. I mean, we, you or I, just we could not do it. It's so. Uh, wicked and deceitful and uh just defiling that we would just i mean i think i would die before i even Mm -hmm. could do some of the things that they do i would die even thinking about it sometimes um and that in that sense i wonder if these people are are some of these hybrids so to speak are alive today and that's they're they're mighty men and and they are able to do things uh, again that we we would never do because of their conscience they have none guys i wanted to go to a question that's in the chat um it, it's a, I think it's a it's a valid question. I've heard other people talk about this. 
wanted to get your thoughts on it. Uh, uh, this is from John. My question is, when the sons of God came into the women, did they possess a fishy terrestrial or did they polymorph into a freakish human stud that the women welcomed them or were they raped? Now, there's a lot of speculation. I used to wonder about that myself when it said they took for themselves wise. Well, the word to me took, if I take something, did I have permission or did I steal it? If it, if, if it was without their permission, it was rape. Being that they are fallen ones who were not following the precepts of God or the instructions of the Lord, in other words, they're not heavenly hosts, then, you know, it's arguable that they weren't um, getting agreement unless the Lord set that in order and said, look, you can't just rape. But then I've heard stories of people talking about these incubus and succubus demons that they'll come into people and just do whatever. And unless they're a believer and rebuke them, you know, sex between people and these entities does happen. And it's not always consensual. Well, this, here, well her- it could have been both. That's what I'm assuming that they probably did take uh, an attractive form, but that they also, you know, probably both, probably the, more corrupt women that you know would just be attracted to them would be fine with it and then i'm sure that they had no qualms with with taking by force either um one thing that's interesting um that i I, again i'm a little rusty on this stuff but basically uh the bible is very clear uh, i believe that you know i don't think there's any debate in my mind about this is that god had a divine a divine assembly essentially uh, uh uh just like the pharaohs of egypt you know they had um they had they, they would they were Pharaoh and then he would appoint his fa- close family members as his co-regents and, and co-rulers and things like that and God I think it's very clear that God um, had a divine assembly essentially in heaven uh, but some of them defected um, and I believe they're called sons of God and we're basically going to be we're, we're there we're the what's going to replace them um, and they they uh, they defected for whatever reason whether it was uh, you know, wanting to cohabitate with women on earth. I don't know, but what's interesting. And also too, it was really interesting is that Jesus quoted this Psalm to the Pharisees who I believe is a picture of the fallen divine um, host essentially, because again, they were, uh, you know, I believe that the earth is, is divided up in, in different areas are, are managed by different principalities. And, um, and, and so it took a, Israel is almost like a microcosm of the world where the Pharisees were basically um, part of that uh, part of that. Uh, well, God's rule on earth, but it was corrupt. And that's where the Pharisees were. And but here's a parallel uh, in the Old Testament referring to the heavenly divine host that fell, I believe. Um, and he's rebuking them for not uh, managing the nations justly. And Jesus quotes this to the Pharisees. So here it is. It's Psalm 82. Um, and I'm going to circle back around to what we were just talking about. So it says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the, fo- the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, you are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High, or sons of God, is the way of saying it. But you will, you shall die like men, and you shall fall like one of the princes. So I almost think that again, he's saying these angels, you're going to die like men. And I think it's, the reason they did that, they died like men, is they left their first estate, came down, took on, took on physical flesh, and uh, and now because they took on uh, physical flesh, they're now subject to the uh, law of death. And, um, and God's not in the habit of God's make, in the habit of making th- something weak, mighty. He's not in the, in the habit of making something mighty that was weak and then mighty again. It, that's why there's no um, salvation for the for these angels. But I, I believe they did take on human flesh, and I wonder if many of them are not walking among among us today. I hate when people quote oh. that and they say that it means we're gods. We're gods. It's not talking to humans. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, as you know, uh, brother, that it's just, Sister Angel, we were talking about this same thing that you just said. Remember I told you, brother, when we were talking on one 
one of the broadcasts over on uh, Church. I think it was Churchill Eternally Secure. I got attacked for mentioning and I thought that these fallen ones, if they were giants before, remember, um, and then if it's also afterwards, I said, did they did they say, you know what, this time let's not stick out like a sore thumb being so tall. Let's shrink ourselves and look like regular men. Because, in, you know, we, we have this instruction in the New Covenant that says um, to be kind to strangers because we may entertain angels unaware. And I always perceive that to mean the reason we would be entertaining them unaware is because they look like us. Now, I believe it is primarily referring to heavenly angels, but it's also interesting that it warns us to be kind. So I have heard different stories where people have said things about entertaining beings that looked human that they later perceived after that visitation. However, they bumped into them was not good ones. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, it is certainly possible. We keep seeing this theme in the movies um, about creatures that look human but really aren't. And uh, when I when I brought that up on a broadcast, somebody went buck wild off on me like, like I was a heretic. And I said, I'm asking a question. It's something I'm perceiving and thinking about, that, the, that this is my admonishment is in the scripture. And so maybe some of the stuff that we're seeing, I'm not saying men aren't evil. The Bible says there were men drinking blood and sacrificing babies to idols and all that. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Yeah, people can do that wickedness. But I also think that uh, there are definitely some people that, well, they look like people that walk among us and they're not. And you've heard stories of, of, uh, of other things happening as Sister Angel uh, wants to have DDoS on, and it is my intention to get him on the broadcast one evening as a guest uh, to talk about Bigfoot sightings and how he got involved in it. So there's definitely different things out there that people have eyewitnessed. They're not crazy. They're not, you know, they weren't high, and they, they weren't even necessarily even practicing in the occult or anything like that. And they saw entities or beings that physically manifested. And the Bible does tell us that this is, will be one of the signs in the last days, which is why I've perceived, and most of you have already perceived this, that all this superhero stuff is preparing the world for the manifestation of these creatures that will be humanoid in appearance to some degree, meaning they have a head and two arms and, and, and legs or whatever else, and they're preparing us for that or humanity for that because there's there's going to be a satanic reveal day what do you guys think satanic reveal day I, I didn't understand that part oh i mean no i don't get it yeah satanic reveal day meaning these entities are going to manifest oh like yeah. here we you know reveal daily is here i am so you know how you see how people do a makeover and they come out they call that a reveal day or maybe oh, yeah. they lost 100 pounds. Okay, these things are going to come out of the shadows or out of from wherever they're hidden or whatever dimension. They are literally going to manifest. Because remember, the Bible says men's hearts will fail them for fear of what is coming upon the earth. And some people think that's not only the signs in the heavens and all the other things that are going to be happening, but that there will be physical manifestations of the fallen ones. Yeah. Um, I I think that uh, men's uh, hearts fail them for fear of the things that come out of the pit. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if, if we'll know. Like they'll come out and say, "Hey, we're fallen angels." I, I don't know about that. Um, that's uh, definitely something to consider for sure. I don't think they use the word "fallen," but <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. either. I think they're going to claim to be. Uh, either some type aliens. of gods or aliens, right? That you know, maybe they we were the ones that seeded mankind because you see that yeah, no, theme in that. all these movies, yeah. yeah. I believe that, but, I, I believe, but that. I think discerning people, saints, will know that these are the, the definitely the fallen 
Oh um, yeah. Fallen Angels. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. I, I, when, when you mentioned it, I was like thinking, you know, like, Oh, on NBC and CBS and all the news that like, well, yeah, the angel, you know, they're angels. I, I don't, I don't see that as a, as the reveal. I don't think they're going to be honest, you know, and tell the truth about who they are. No. But the whole alien oh, no, thing. Yeah. I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean oh, that no. they're going to say that we're fallen angels. <laughs> no, I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. I think yeah. there's going to be where, okay, just like you see Wolverine and all this stuff, these characters, that these beings are going to manifest. They're going to look like, because see, a lot of these depictions are because people have seen these things. And so they just make replicas of it and put it in the movies. And when they do manifest, they've got to have an explanation. So what better than aliens? Because, look, you've already seen these weird-looking creatures that are maybe tall or regular size, but they have weird, grotesque features or whatever. You've seen that in Star Trek forever. So that's what I'm saying. They're going to manifest, and they're going to say, oh, hey, we're aliens from another world or whatever. And as I always say, they're not from another world. They're from the netherworld. But the world has already been programmed and conditioned not to be shocked by such things. They see it all the time. So how much more is it to take it from what you've seen on that screen to actually in front of your face? I, I don't think it's, it's too far away. Not for uh, us, but for the world. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure they're doing all kinds of genetic tampering that we don't know about. What What do you What do you guys think about like? Um, I was always curious that you know Noah was told to bring clean and unclean animals uh, onto the ark, and uh, why? What, what first of all, what made them unclean? Um, was there something more to it? You know, was it kind of ge genetic tampering type of thing, uh, or is it more like a ceremonial unclean in terms of it's a it's a foreshadow of the of the law. I, I, I don't know. It's so it's yeah. not that interesting. I've always perceived that it was just like the pigs, which, which is that's considered an unclean animal because of its split hoof. And uh, it doesn't chew its cud. There's reasons that they say it's unclean as well as there's a few other animals that they call unclean according to the law. So I've always perceived it was that I, I, I don't know. I've never heard anybody make the argument that it was something that there was other you know, that would that would almost be defeating God's purpose because the the Bible is clear that the beasts and the other animals that had been sinned against, they were all going to be destroyed. Um, you know, in other words, the ones that had been changed or mutated or whatever. So he I think he's bringing the ones on that hadn't been and that the unclean reference is to that. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, we can certainly discuss it. Yeah. Brother Cripps, do you have any thoughts on that? I, I'm sorry, I got distracted. Could you could you say your last yeah. sentence again? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. No, Brother Ben had wondered about where the scripture says uh, Noah brought both clean and unclean beasts on the ark. Did the unclean re represent the foreshadowing of the law that was to come regarding unclean beasts, meaning uh, the the ones that don't chew their cud Whoa. and have the split hoof? Or were they actually genetically altered through their, their sinning? Were they unclean in that regard? And I was saying, I didn't think so. I think it was referring to the to the foreshadowing of the lava, which what with what would be considered an unclean animal to eat. Yeah, but I, would, I wanted to get your thoughts. I would agree. And also, uh, remember, the, the, all the laws uh, and everything that came later weren't set down. I, 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 you know, maybe they were always unclean, uh, but for Noah, were, were they considered unclean? Like, did they know, okay, we're not supposed to eat this or, or that? I, I, I don't, I don't know that, that they did that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, it was earlier. Yeah. Than the no, law I do. Down. Yeah. That's so. a good point. I never thought about that. Yeah. So uh, God just said, you know, he sent the animals. So whatever, whatever animals came to Noah, then Noah would just, you know, all right, come on get up here. We got food for you and everything. Um, mm -hmm. So I uh, think it is possible perhaps that it, I, mean, I don't know. Cause I mean, don't, isn't there some speculation that the wives were not necessarily perfect in their generations either? 
It always says no, it was so. Um, yeah, so maybe it wouldn't be out of the question for him to have you know tampered with. I don't know, uh, like, like some degree of tampering with some of the animals on the ark. I'm not sure. That's a good question because. Unless it was somehow colloquially understood that there was unclean animals, I don't see any reason to think there was a reason for them to know any type of, you know, ritual clean or uncleanness at that right. point. That's a good question. I've never thought about that. That's something nobody's ever even brought up <laughs> that I've heard anybody ever bring up. Oh. Um, John makes a good point. He says he's basically saying that some of the animals were animals that were for uh sacrifice or suited for sacrifice and others others were not but uh, the point that uh, brother Cripps and bro both have been made this is pre-law so yeah. there were there, there hadn't been given yet the instruction for sacrifices I, I don't remember the bible referring to noah making sacrifices right well uh i think but, it did but, I think God, Oh, okay. Go ahead, brother man. After, after. Yeah, I was just gonna. He did, yeah, it was he did after afterwards. the flood. Yeah, but and see, also, that's too, what I'm saying. God foreknew yeah. that that was going to happen, so maybe He's already setting up what the difference is between clean and unclean. Because prior than that, we don't see that said. Yeah. Yeah, I think I believe there there were uh, two or so, was it seven pairs of clean and two pairs of unclean. I can't remember. There's more. I thought there was more. He told them to bring in more clean than unclean, I believe. Um, and also, too, is that it, see, it would seem that uh, people did not, or were not at least not supposed to, eat uh, uh, the animal flesh until God okayed it, essentially, to Noah after he said, after he got off the ark. I, right. you know, given the wickedness that that was pervasive, and prior to that, I, I'm, I'm assuming that it did occur, but it just wasn't lawful. Right. Good point. Also, too, I want to mention that I, I don't. I, I when I said about giants, I didn't say I didn't want anyone to think that come away that I, I don't think there were. The more I, I think there's a lot of evidence actually that there is. Uh, mm -hmm. there, that there were giants. I'm just saying. Uh, I often want. I sort of throw off that possibility that scripture. I don't think it, you could make. I don't think you can make the case necessarily <laughs> definitively. I think you can make a strong case of scripture, but not uh, open and shut. I don't think maybe. I don't know. Or or but, that or not? that it's only big people. You know what I mean? Right. I mean right. that that's I think what that's what you're driving at, which is the same point I was driving at. I yeah. won't dispute that they were probably fifteen or twenty foot or whatever they were, tall be, uh, men blended with the fallen ones. But at the same time, uh if if you're if this is a Say, and it is a satanic plan against humanity, then he's going to try to deal wisely. <laughs> you know, he's going to try to be as stealth as possible, particularly when the second go round, you know, we would know what to look for. We have the scripture. We know what to look for. If you saw somebody 15 foot tall walking down the street, you're going to go giant, not of God. <laughs> so. Uh, I, that's what I'm saying. I think that, that this time around, they're either hidden where they ain't coming out, at least where we can see them, or uh, they, they've taken on a different form. Maybe they shrank themselves down. That was just my speculation. Now, we're not saying it's written in stone, but if well, they're still around, we're not seeing a manifest, at least walking down the street right now anyway. Well, um, Abraham Lincoln, he, there's a quote by Ev even Abraham Lincoln who said that uh, I think he, has, he was looking over the Ni Niagara Falls for the first time. He was quoted as saying something like, I, I don't know, he, he mentioned something and then something about the, uh, uh, you know, over the, he's basically saying, oh, I'm thinking about all the times other people be before me have looked at this flood. And he basically said, including the giants that uh, are found in mounds all over our great country or something to that effect. Mm. Um and I, I, I know that I know that there are definitely mounds uh, in the U.S. In fact, there's pyramids and stuff like that uh, in the U.S. that are not talked about at all uh, or looked at. Yeah. And, and a lot here of in Indiana. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And a lot of times you can't you can't go and investigate it because it's like tribal. There, there's tribal laws that say no, you can't can't disturb this area. Hmm. There's some real disturbing stuff in Indiana that's like some type of like snake cult mounds that. 
yes. supposedly they were like cannibalistic giants or something. You know, I think that we think about height and that's one thing. But if you take scale a person up to 15 feet, I mean, you know, my husband, he's uh, well, he says he's six two. He's like the only guy I know who undercuts his height. He's definitely six four. Um, but he like he also says he's small boned. It's very weird. He's I always you're very dainty, baby. But he's actually like he's very tall, and um, he's you know he's always been thin, but he's not small boned. He's like he's six four. You can't really be small boned when you're six four unless you look really weird. And um and he but he's six four and he's just so much bigger than me. Like he's not mm. heavy. He's not heavy, but he's just bigger like uh, you know his arms like are like on my leg and so if you think of uh if you think of five foot like i mean a, 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 a you know a 15 foot giant you have to scale up the rest of their dimensions too and realize how mm-hmm. how tall how large they would be um mm-hmm. that they would be terrifying you know it's- like because they talk about 15 foot cryptids and people have like mm. like for from what i understand um um somebody who tries to estimate the size of uh you know cryptid sightings right like this one researcher he you know he'll take uh, people's information like he says that people you know they'll tell them that something was uh 10 foot tall but then they they say well, he's like how much did it weigh and they'll say like oh at least 400 pounds and He's explained like no, like if you scale something up to that size, like people always underestimate how much they weigh, like how mm-hmm. how much the, the weight goes up. But right. um, um, it, you know, uh, I, I think that uh, if we saw something that was fifteen foot tall, I mean, it, it would look like a like a monster, like the Hulk or something, you know, from you know something from the movies. Uh, if it, it, you know, if they unless they were really scrawny, but um, that could be a very imposing uh, creature. Uh, a 15 foot tall humanoid with a uh, with a huge with a huge build um, to mm-hmm. where it would absolutely be a giant as opposed to just sort of like a really tall guy. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I remember preachers talking about back in the day Goliath, uh, the size of his sword, um, and and how much it weighed, and it was like it was monstrous. I was trying to see if I could find the length and the weight of it because it actually is given in the scriptures. So it was actually amazing. It was pretty heavy and David was able to of course pick it up to use it to cut off his head <laughs> to cut off his head. But um let's see we have mm, by the way, there's a good, while you're looking at that, Lisa, mm-hmm. um, there's a good channel on YouTube, a guy who has, I think he has a very sober matter of fact, but, uh, supernatural, but realistic, balanced view of the Nephilim. His name's Ken Ami, A-M-M-I. I don't know what else he, he's into, so I don't, I, I, I'm just saying, he did some recent uh, videos about Nephilim and stuff like that, and what scripture says, and, and different, it just kind of gives you a, a good grounding, I think, in, in uh, the debate of what the, these people were exactly. Just yeah, well, that's listed. Points. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you're you're good. Oh, it was listed in First Samuel. They're saying it weighed about 126 pounds. <laughs> so, mm. and that it was wow. about nine and a half feet. So, uh, that's a pretty good sword. <laughs> that's a pretty big sword. But, uh, you know, guys, really. Um, this, this is something to consider. I mean, I would, okay. Just prior to this, I was thinking about, remember the wrestler, Andre, the giant, I think he's just over seven feet tall. And I saw him on a David Letterman interview and watched him walk in and then sit down and shake David Letterman's hand. The mitts on that guy, I mean, hands on that guy was, it was like three times the size of David Letterman's hand, and he was only seven feet tall. And then there was the guy from Moonraker. Remember him? I can't think of his name. It was in the James Bond film. Oh, yeah. uh, I can't remember the actor's name. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. He, he was about seven feet tall, too. He was huge. They had, like, size 20 shoes, <laughs> you know? But And that's just – that's half of what some of these estimates are for these giants, like – the average they said was about 15 feet and those guys are half of that and they're still huge and oh and he was talking about Andre the Giant they asked him how 
uh, he asked him, how much beer do you drink? And he says, well, I stopped drinking because he got like really sloshed one night and I guess it scared him or something. So he said he didn't really drink anymore other than a little wine. And when David Letterman said, what's a little wine? He said like three bottles. <laughs> so when he sits down to drink wine. Whoa. And then, yes. And when he had the beer, the night that he had too much beer, what do you, how many beers do you think it was, guys? They don't, I don't want you to get like crazy outrageous, but – just if you imagine what the average human man you think could drink just and not kill himself, what do you think that would be? Uh, the average man uh, yeah. killed themselves. Well, I, I've known people to drink a whole case, which is 24. Okay. And and they're not, uh, they're not real communicative. Uh, most of them mm -hmm. at that point, but I don't think it would kill them. <laughs> uh, okay. So maybe, what would your uh, guess be? My guess would be uh, a case and a half. So that would be uh, essentially 24 and 12, which is uh, 36. the 36 beers. Okay. Crips says 36. Sister Angel, you want to take a guess? Sister Angel, you there? Did I lose you? Oh, sorry. I, okay. I don't know much about alcohol. Uh, so uh -huh. uh, I'm going to count. Well, yeah, 36, 36. I'll say 36. Okay. 36 beers. Brother Ben, what do you think? <laughs> Somebody funny, seven. That's exactly what I was going to say, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, I, I know like ten is a lot, you know. <laughs> I can't imagine. He, he, more he than says that. he says he drank a hundred and ten no! beers. Jeez. Wow, wow, a hundred and ten by himself. So this is what I'm saying. So now imagine, remember how the Bible says that their appetites are enormous. That he talked about how much he he. I was sitting there thinking about. How much he he could eat because i know guys that are just I mean, like six four six five and they have pretty vor voracious appetites if they went to sit down to eat and they were really hungry let's just say we went to eat cheeseburgers they could eat at least three cheeseburgers all right i'm talking about nice size loaded cheeseburgers i imagine that he probably could eat 12 of those i was looking at him and i said easy easily now i was thinking about Vos safe, uh, the vos safe, uh, the word I'm looking for, the word I'm looking for is of enormous appetite. I can't remember voracious, the word right now. Voracious, Thank you. voracious. Thank you. Uh, voracious appetites where they, they couldn't feed them anymore. Remember? And they started eating people. Well, I saw a, a stone carving. Um, Ben, you might be able to find it while I'm talking of Nimrod. Um, where it's carved like out of this rock. And it's, it's a really elaborate carving. And it shows Nimrod, his image, and he's holding a lion like it's a cat. Now yeah. I said, how come they never told us about <laughs> to consider that Nimrod may have actually been a giant? Uh, because that carving is depicted. Where did that come from? Did they just make that up? Or were they depicting what they actually saw? Because if he's holding a lion like it's a cat, then how, how big is a lion? And then how big would you have to be for it to look like a regular person holding a cat? Yeah, there's a lot of depiction. There's a lot of depiction. I have a whole notebook of giant evidence. There's all, most, a lot of the evidence is ancient uh, depictions of giants clearly in the archaeological record. Now, now uh, mainstream archaeology will, will you know, have an excuse for that. Say, oh, well... Of course he's big because he's he's uh, emphasizing his kingship or whatever, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't make sense at all. They uh, act like they were so different from us that like stuff that would be totally not logical for us to do today. Oh, that was totally logical for them. That's what they like. You know, if we wanted to pick something, like they were just children or so. I don't know. They act like that's right, how they, they right. make us think we're so right. we're so much smarter than they are now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they were depicting it because that's what he was. Because there was a guy, uh, I never forget, I don't remember his name, but he said back in the day, he said, there's a passage of scripture where I can't remember if it was in the Hebrew, but the word that's there concerning Nimrod, he said it actually meant he began to become a Gaborim. Yeah. Yeah, now, Gaborim, I don't know yes. what Gaborim means, but Brother Ben, do you have more information on that? Well, I, again, I, there's a lot of debate. I think a lot of people people make cases both ways that uh, Giborum means mighty man. 
Uh, and, and others say, no, it means giant or both mighty man and giant. I tend to think it means mighty man because it says he became a mighty man. You know, it makes mm-hmm. log, uh, linguistically, it makes more sense that way. Um, I, I don't know if someone could become a giant. I mean, I, it's possible too, I guess, you know. I just, thought that he supposedly grew hair all over his body or like turned into a wild man. Is that a different that was that Nebuchadnezzar? Was that yeah, I that's get, been I Nebuchadnezzar? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was weird. Where, yeah, that where, one's weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, eating, eating grass and thinking you were an animal. Yeah, but that's that and there's you know, epigenetics kind of lend some sort of, you know, credence to the idea that you could actually change um um you know obviously it might not it's probably not as easy as uh as that because otherwise they wouldn't have to tamper with our genetics they could just expose us to different conditions and we turn into an animal but there's probably a spiritual thing at work there but you know i've heard some people interpret that as sort of kind of resembling like a sasquatch type thing Mm -hmm. um you know a wild man ape man type thing and um you know uh uh it i i don't know i find that to be interesting and also we you know i think there's something else in scripture too where it was like somebody's i forget who someone's friend a friend of someone in scripture was described i believe as a as something like a, like a wild man as something like like people some people have interpreted to be like sort of like a sasquatch or a giant of some sort um i don't know if that rings a bell with anybody i can't no, remember no, 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 no. now the closest I can think of that um, is Ishmael. Is, well, Ishmael, he's referred to as being a wild jackass of a man, um, which, again, I think is an allusion to the Jews. Because, um, uh, again, the, the, the Ishmael was the, the, the child that was a uh, – well, I think it's, God makes it – No, like, it's, it's, I'm confusing well, it. It was actually something else. It was, uh, it was something extra biblical. That, 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 okay. that was that – was but, yeah, yeah, I, that could – to me, a wild jackass of a man could be, like, metaphorical. Oh right. yeah, absolutely. I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's uh, it, well. For, Ishmael talks about he's going to be um, uh, father of twelve princes or something like that. Uh, obviously, it's an allusion to the twelve tribes. It just says he's a wild jackass of the man of a man. And it, again, I think it's a picture of the flesh. He's all mm-hmm. it's absolutely a pic. Well, that I'm not. I'm sorry. That's Ishmael. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but Ishmael was cast away, just like the you know. Uh, just like uh, God's going to cast away the Jews it, it, that aren't believing him. You know, they don't become sons of promise. But anyways, uh, with regards to Nebuchadnezzar, I don't think he said he had hair all over his body. They get just said his hair grew out, his nails grew long, and he ate uh, ate um, grass like a, like a uh, ox. And there's mm-hmm. really uh, – one thing I have a lot of stuff in my repository is I've, I collect a lot of documents of, of like really good – Archaeological uh, archaeological evidence of, of uh, accounts of Nebuchadnezzar doing just that, but they suppress it. Um, mm-hmm. This is old, old, like uh, old evidence, like from the early uh, at the beginning of the century, people would find, and you don't ever hear about it. But um, it's amazing some of these cylinder seals they'll find talking about these very things. Mm. Well, guys, we could talk probably talk about this all night because it's a very interesting topic. But we are going to have to move along. We'll, we'll come back to this another time. Uh, it's going to be time for us to go to Brother Ben and his QAnon segment in just a moment here. But I also wanted to ask Sister Angel. Angel, have you been able to contact uh, Brother d Yes, yet? I did. Ben graciously okay. gave me his uh, – found his email address for me without me having to go through all my comments. He had did like a whole bunch of – he had a whole bunch of uh, shows scheduled. His channel's mm-hmm. been flooded. So um, – and since we, he had talked to me about doing it next week, but I know you're not going to be available next week. So um, I'm going to uh, get back with him um, and figure out uh, when might be when might be good uh, other than that. Um, and also, okay. I mean, if, if, if possible, I'm sure we could maybe schedule something that might not actually be on a Saturday yes, um, if that's that. difficult for him. So uh, right. I talked to him about that. So so uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll definitely get that going, though. But um, OK, but uh, well, before you contact him to give him any dates, talk to me first. So for the next yes. Like, oh, yes. three months, I, will, I can yes. give you what what Saturdays I'm available to make sure and then. Uh, we'll get that scheduled because I know everybody's looking forward to uh, meeting. Is he the world's only or the country's only? Black, <laughs> the only, black the only one I know of. 
<laughs> the only so I guess we'll say the the world's only black Bigfoot. Does he call himself an investigator or um, researcher, researcher. researcher. I mean, okay. I'm sure a lot of black guys actually like look into it, but he goes out in the field and everything mm -hmm. and he's like pretty well known. So, so he's the only real well known now uh, black Bigfooter. They call him, there's no Bigfooters wow. uh, that I, that I've ever seen. And he's, it's a, a, he's, but he's a, he's a country boy though. He's a, I've he's got a at least boy. 20, I've got at least 20 questions for him right off the bat. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Usually it's these black people have more sense than to go around chasing a chasing Bigfoot in the woods. But, uh, wow. <laughs> not I find it guys. fascinating. I really do. I find it fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Anybody to, to keep uh, interested after, you know, the initial interest that you have and maybe you watch a few documentaries and then you go on and you live your life. But to, to, actually spin and make it kind of your life's work, even if it's just a hobby, um, which for him, it's definitely more than a hobby. So I definitely want to uh, look well, forward I, to that I think interview. it's spurred along because he's, he's encountered them in the field. Um, and mm -hmm. also the, the best thing about him, I thought we got he's black, but he is also a real biblical Christian, which is yes. very hard to find in that field, which is um, right. uh, uh, awesome. So, um, and he has, he, he thinks along a lot of the same lines we do, but he also has the right gospel. So praise mm -hmm. God. <laughs> praise God. So that's coming up, ladies and gentlemen. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to get Mr. DDoS on here to talk about fascinating information uh, regarding the topic of Bigfoot. So uh, please stay tuned so you can, uh, I'll let you know. I'll get a special graphic made for that particular broadcast. So you know when it's going to happen so you won't miss out. And it might Rather not, than, if it can't be on a Saturday, we'll, we'll announce it in advance so you guys yes. can tune in. We'll give you plenty of notice. Brother Ben, are you ready to talk about all things Q? Yes, I even have your new graphic, <laughs> graphic up. <laughs> That's great. I could, I could not have a graphic for you after I, I created the one for uh, Brother Cripps for his <laughs> wonderful movie corner. And I know it's so controversial. People want to fight every time we mention Q. And again, guys, we're, Brother Ben is not saying that any of this stuff is true or even real. He's just reporting what Q is saying about certain stuff. And uh, he believes that Q is in some way connected, meaning he may be in the president's cabinet or somewhere in the military close, or he's privy to certain information because of the facts that he, he uh, divulges that end up either coming out in the media, either days, weeks, or even months later, that they end up reporting that he already had out there. So how do you get that if you're not connected? And that's the kind of thing that he's saying. He's not saying it, it we should believe any of it. He's just presenting uh, what, is revealed. I don't want to go digging around for Q information on the dark web. You got to know what you're doing. You're fooling around going messing with the dark web and brother Ben knows what he's doing. So uh, that's why we defer to him. So people don't get in any trouble trying to find out about Q. So brother Ben, take it away. Tell us what you discovered about Q this week. Okay. Um, well, uh, technically Q, it, it posts on a, a, a service called, uh, well, it used to, it, I think it was first eight Chan. And then now he's moved to 8 Coon, it's called. It's just basically a service where you can uh, post anonymously, but you can also authenticate your correspondence so that you, someone, it's called non repudiation, where someone cannot deny that they uh, posted something and someone else can't claim uh, that they did either. So it's a way of uh, just authenticating that the person, whoever says, whoever says they did or uh, posted something, it actually came from that person. Um, so th that's really why they use that, that particular uh, site or web service. And I guess those websites are, there's definitely some questionable stuff on those websites. I've gone to it like once or twice and it's anywhere from like, you know, talk about cars and there's other stuff that's much darker. So I, I wouldn't recommend ever going there. Uh, I don't even go there. Um, in fact, I, there's these Q aggregator sites as they say, so they don't, people will take them off of the, uh, basically scrub the uh, 8chan, uh, 4chan, 4, 4coon, or whatever it's called, sites, and then present them into a friendly format. And that's uh, what I have here uh, that I'm showing now on the screen. Um, not, so what's the major themes that we're going on this week is that basically, you know, again, there's a slow trick trickle of 
un, uh, uh, declassified materials that ultimately is just going to show that, you know, again, it's got a Q is saying it has to come out slowly so that the public not, he's not trying to, uh, you know, try to get the public to, to come to their own conclusions about this stuff. So they're slowly leaking the stuff as a slow drip. So for the un, you know, for the uninitiated people who are just getting their mainstream narrative, they, they will kind of over time, uh, be revealed the truth so they'll, that they will come to these conclusions themselves as opposed to just hang it to them on a silver platter um that that's again supposedly the strategy okay and then uh moving on again just going over the last couple of weeks here um and so there's a lot of boring stuff like that about peter stroke and uh, you know crossfire hurricane and google and things like that being involved i think it's interesting actually is that you know all these major tech companies, Google was big, heavily involved. I mean, there's pictures that Q posted earlier on where Barack Obama, um, uh, the head of Google, all these different politicians, Mark Zuckerberg, they're all toasting at a, uh, on a, at a, at a dinner party, essentially. I and mean, they were all obviously, it was the top guys for all the tech companies and major people on, on the Obama administration, uh, you know, basically chumming it up. Um, so, Again, that's part of the narrative is they're going to be exposing more and more of that that type of uh, of that uh, that the fact that they were the government, especially in the Obama administration, was in was bedfellows with big tech. Um, again, that's again. I think ultimately he's saying it's going to be uh, it's going to lead to treason. And I mean, uh, if they don't deliver on that, uh, which they might not, who knows? Maybe this whole thing could be just a to- a way to buy time uh, before they can implement uh, some other atrocious uh plan that we don't that none of us or anyone can anticipate it could be just a, a big ruse to buy time i don't know or it could be a, a legitimate thing where q is actually uh gonna deliver on these uh uh persecution or uh, prosecution of uh these politicians and other uh executives i mean there, there's a lot of evidence like i said uh it, one of the things on this q site for example they have a whole thing of tracking all the ceo res- resignations and they are major, major people, major corporations that are uh, stepping down, retiring, or even some of them, you know, have committed suicide. So it something's going on. I don't know exactly what. I don't know what the end result is going to be, but I believe there is something going on um, that's all related to this. Um, okay, let's see here. Going further here, one thing that Q kind of is reporting lately is, uh, and I mentioned this before, where. Florida children were required uh, to register uh, for the COVID for their COVID tests. Um, And they, so the Florida schools required, uh, the uh, I don't know if it's certain uh, county or whatever, but a a certain county, I guess, in Florida required all the kids to be uh, tested for COVID before they could go back to school. And the lines were so long and taking so long, a lot of the kids just bailed and and, uh, never took the test. And like the next day, they got notified notified that they tested positive for the for the virus, even though they never took the test. So a lot of shenanigans going on there um, in the yeah. way that they're uh, counting. One thing accused is, is emphasizing a lot over and over again is that it's just the uh, ridiculous counts of of uh, of what they're you know they're playing with the with the with the uh, deaths and give everything's COVID related. Right. We, we, uh, giving a lot of evidence for that. Uh, and it, it kind of, this is a good aggregate site if you want to see all that evidence uh, from mainstream resources. Um, but uh, again, it's all about storytelling. One thing he mentioned this week is that um, the, apparently the, I was it Indiana government? No, no, the safety, safety standards and core rules for Washington state university, or Washington state, they basically have a, a COVID uh, mandate and it, the mandate ends the day after the election and Q saying that's a, that's not coincidental. Um, and that there is uh, he says, prepare for, for a massive zero day, uh, cyber attack or power grid attack on 11, four. I think, um, for whatever reason, I'm not sure. I I guess that's a probably to suppress voting or uh, complicate the voting. I don't, I don't know. So that's interesting. Um, let's see here. He's talk- oh, this was this was interesting today. Um, he talks about Peter Pinocchio. It really is, is if you, I, I think it's pretty undeniable 
but Pinocchio is a a, a a children's tale about uh, basically what they do at Epstein Island, where they lure kids in. Um, and uh, so I'll read this right here, for example. This is only two pages from a children's story about Pinocchio. It says, meanwhile, Honest John and Gideon were, were at a tavern. A fat coachman was was there, too. Honest John bragged about how much money, he's kind of cut off, Stromboli, he paid them for Pinocchio. Stromboli had paid them for Pinocchio. I pay even more for small boys, said the coachman. He showed them a sack full of gold. The coachman told Honest John his scheme. He brought boys to a place called Pleasure Island, Epstein Island. He said no boys ever return, at least not as boys. Honest John decided to catch more small boys. Just then, Pinocchio and I were racing home to get to home to Geppetto. I ran very fast. I did not see Honest John stop Pinocchio until it was too late. Um, so again, they're, they're basically uh, saying that you know this has been with us for a long time. This this uh, this stuff. I don't think anybody's gonna, is gonna, is surprised to any of us. But oh, there's another thing too. The New York Post. It's called the Shame of Thrones. He's got a uh, New York Post cover. It's called Shame of Thrones. It's got uh, Gazelle, or I don't know how to say her first name, Maxwell, and Skip, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Spacey. And then Q basically says, I uh, points to an article, Washington Examiner article, saying that uh, the day after uh, Kevin Spacey uh, posted a tweet that said, uh, killed them with kindness, one of his accusers was dead the next day. Uh, so basically saying that's code. They kind of speak uh, out in the um, the wide open. And they, use, they use public channels to communicate with each other, but it's kind of in code. Um, another thing here is that he mentioned there's a lot of satanic marks and, and just the overall theme of Satanism with this Black, Lighters, Black Lives Matter movement where church are being desecrated and, and painted over with satanic marks. I mentioned that before where people were... Uh, People I follow on Twitter, they would just take pictures of people in protests that were just really bizarre. Just people wearing really bizarre uh, satanic stuff that it, it had nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. Um, it was really an undercurrent of Satanism. I don't think, and again, a uh, surprise to any of us. Um, and again, what he, uh, uh, what Q is basically saying over and over again that this country was for, has been for sale for a long time and it's been infiltrated heavily by the Chinese and the mother Muslim Brotherhood, uh, mainly the Chinese, though, in that pretty much all the uh, Democratic leaders are bought and paid for by them. Uh, that's where they get all their funding from. All the media is uh, essentially bought and paid for the Chinese. Um, even places like Drudge Report have been bought out by the Chinese now. Um, let's see here. Anything else worth mentioning? Again, I mentioned before, they say that Giselle Maxwell, she's more important than Epstein. Epstein was like the uh they're saying uh, max maxwell is like Capetto, uh and i forgot the story there but basically she she was the one that was running everything fc was just a kind of a lap dog pretty much and just did the did the uh she was kind of like you know he helped uh he, he was a small player though a relatively small player compared to what she she knows and what she's involved in and that, that apparently more revelation about that kind of stuff is be coming out soon mm -hmm. so Tomorrow. Well, Victoria had said that she thought that uh, there was talk about um, QAnon being uh, was alleged to be the late JFK Jr. Yes, there there Do you are some anything about that. <laughs> there are some peculiar things. I mean, I'll say for example, QAnon is a Q. If you look at John F. Kennedy's grave site, it's a big Q around it. Um, mm. Obviously, uh, Jr. was his son and people have said and trump was really you just saw pictures of trump and jfk jr uh you know uh smoozing together you know the pictures of going to a basketball game apparently they were pretty good friends um people have taken pictures of pe certain people uh on the back of in the rallies behind trump and it, do, it does look uh, that uh, guy didn't look like him to me though I well, I've, seen, I've, seen different, uh, <laughs> I've seen different ones i don't know who knows it could be photoshopped i don't know if there's anything to it or not they, people have speculated that yes there's a lot of speculation against that i don't know uh, q have said before wait till you wait till you find out who i am basically um mm. and, and there's also too that basically since it's a team of it of like 
I think less than nine people. It's really less than nine people that knows the plan, supposedly. Um, Remember, we talked about this because I said I had this weird feeling that I can't shake that somehow JFK has something to do with the Antichrist. And um, yes. and, yes. and I uh, it, it's been bothering me. It comes out of nowhere. And like I haven't been able to shake it for like three years now. And it makes no sense to me. But I can't get rid of it. And um, uh, it, so it would. I'm mean, hey. When, as soon as they started saying that Q might be JFK Jr., I was like, oh, are you kidding me? Like that. That's just more. Like maybe there's something to this. This weird uh, uh, hunch I have. Um, there's a lot of <laughs> weird numerology with all of the dates they've given us surrounding that family. Like all the significant dates in the uh, the family's lives. Like I went. I did like. I spent a whole half day like just doing basic gematria. No, I'm not saying that I don't believe in like all the, the mystical, magical stuff, but I, they could right. encode stuff with it. Right. And, and and it's definitely it, like everything adds up to 9-11. Everything, every date that I <laughs> I was given, like even the date of something to do with like one of the elder uh, uh, Kennedys, like something that happened in the war. I think it was when one of them got killed in World War II. It was crazy, like all 9-11. Um, okay, so guys, let me stop mm -hmm. you here real briefly. Uh, I, I, I'm perfectly comfortable continuing for a few more minutes, but for Brother Cripps, he has said that he needs to take off around this time. So what I would like to do is give him the opportunity to say goodnight to everyone should he like to right. exit the broadcast at this time. Yeah, thank you. That's very thoughtful. I didn't want to be rude. I didn't want to uh, interrupt. Uh, and I don't want Ben to think I don't care about his uh, segment because I do. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I got a chance to hear it before I uh, took off because I am in, I am interested at least in uh, hearing what he finds. And um, uh, so that's that's good. Thank you, uh, Sister Lisa. Thank you for again letting me be a part of the uh, conversation. I felt like I was a little more uh, quiet today, which but which is totally fine. I didn't have a uh, a topic. So I enjoyed uh, listening to, um, I mean, I entered in a couple things, but uh, uh, I enjoyed listening to you guys and being a part of the conversation. And I'll say goodnight to everyone in the chat. I wasn't uh, really active in there as much as I usually am uh, either. So um, I'll, I'll uh, get back to full power uh, next weekend. So uh, uh, love you guys. And um, I will uh, talk to you guys soon. All right, you have a wonderful it. evening and say good night to your fiance for us all. I yes, okay, Jen. <laughs> all right, good night, guys. Yep. Good, good night. night. Okay, now we were talking about, I thought it was fascinating. I had to go look, and that is the uh, <laughs> Ben was a lion, the grave site for uh, JFK Jr. is in the shape of a Q. And yeah. you know what's interesting is how the Bible talks about. Um, the, the like the the grievous head wound that kind of thing yes that's um, what we were talking father, about the other night yeah was assassinated that way and then you know king arthur camelot it, it, is there yep yeah the that whole was the thing, thing like that, that the once and future king the once and future yes, king yes. And, right. and they replayed that that footage of the head the deadly wound uh, over and over and over again and I just can't shake it because of the fact that why would they do that? Why did they like it? Because I know they, they killed, they didn't have to kill him that way. It didn't have to be so public. It didn't have to be such a spectacle. It was very, like, it was very important too. Like the George Bush senior was there. And um, it seems like everybody that's running our society today had, was, had some hand in that whole event. And um, like the, there's a, a, a documentary called um, From JFK to 9-11, Everything's a Rich Man's Trick. That documentary right. blew my mind when I first mm. kind of like gotten into all this truth or stuff. And I'm um, sorry, Sister Angel, say that one more time. What was that? It was called um, From JFK to 9-11, Everything was a Rich, Everything is a Rich Man's Trick. Okay. And yeah. it's, it's, it's incredible. And um uh, yeah, there's a lot because like uh, one of the things that I had, I kept finding more breadcrumbs, the fact that they called his White House Camelot. Um, mm -hmm. And that was so arbitrary. And it was supposedly just some offhanded remark that a journalist had made. But when I started reading, like I'm related distantly to the Kennedys and um, through through the pin dragon line. So I, 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 I didn't even know that that, you know, King Arthur was a real person. Um, 
but then I, when I did my, my ancestry, you know, the, the, the farthest I could trace it back on, um, my father's side was, uh, Arthur Cymbeline Pendragon, um, mm -hmm. because I'm descended from some Kings. So, uh, he, um, he was what, the, you know, like it was a long time ago, but I found out that that was King Arthur. Well, so Kennedy's also descended from him, King Arthur. And then they, they allude to him, you know, the Camelot mythology with, uh, JFK for oh, no apparent reason. And, um, and I, and I just thought that it, the King Arthur is a type of Antichrist. He is a mm -hmm. type of the Antichrist all the way. Um, and mm -hmm. they call him the once and future king. Uh, that he'll come back when his kingdom needs him the most and um, that people think he's dead. And it also reminds me of the Cthulhu thing with, with, uh, with Lovecraft because they like, Oh, Cthulhu's not dead, but dreaming. Right. And so there's this idea of some of a, of a, of a fallen King being held in some sort of stasis and he returns somehow. And, and, and the Bible does tell us that, that people will marvel you know, that, uh, that because mm -hmm. they, that he was wounded as if to death. And a lot of people have speculated that, that, um, you know, that the, the Antichrist, the beast will be, uh, appeared, appear, you know, have a, head, a, a deadly head wound that, it, that is healed and people will have thought he was dead. And, I, and to me, I, I, I started thinking, well, what would be a, a better way to win the trust of the whole world than for, for one, just to have a martyr return from the dead? like somebody that we consider a martyr um, uh, that we thought was dead and everybody, you know, how, how the media stirs it up. Like we talked with Kurt Cobain, even who was, you know, a little more than a heroin junkie uh, male prostitute in, uh, in Seattle. And trust me, I'm committing blasphemy of my, my teenage self. I, I no no offense to Kurt Cobain fans out there, but, but that's what he was. He was a male prostitute and a heroin addict. Um, and, um, he, you know, for people, he killed himself. And so people like just fall in love with with any of these fallen uh, heroes, right? That they consider once they're dead, every, they, everything changes about their legacy. They're no longer human. They're, they're, they're elevated to this God status. And um, to me, it just seemed like one way that I can explain the world's fascination with uh, the beast or the Antichrist, the Manson, sort of, you know, it would be if he were actually a figure, like a historical figure that was considered, you know, above reproach, a hero who died for the cause mm -hmm. of freedom. And the truth movement has done everything to make JFK seem like he was, he got killed by the Illuminati because he was trying to well, take down the CIA. Right. Well, Angel, you're going to have to give up one of your theories, either that uh -oh. JFK is the Antichrist or that the, uh, Antichrist will um, reveal the flat earth because <laughs> Kennedy was the person who said we're going to the moon. <laughs> right. Um, well, who I'm, knows? He could have, he could be like, and I found out it was all a lie and that's why they <laughs> killed me. You know what I, I mean? Just, I'm teasing. Mm. <laughs> right. I, know, I don't, I don't know how true. it makes any sense. It, do, it doesn't make any sense to me because what are they going to bring him back now? I'm not saying it makes sense. Guys in the chat, I understand it makes no sense. I just can't mm -hmm. get rid of this nagging sense that he has something to do with it um well, I, I, I did after we talk i did make some more connections i'll have to dig them out again but oh yeah i did find more connections and um, <laughs> I, i'll have to dig them up and i do i, I do want I, I i wanted to revisit the trump thing the weirdness around trump because uh, i've got mm. a lot more than that that's really just bizarre uh that needs, i think it's worthwhile exploring um but a couple things i just think i'll lie well first first of all i um I'd like to get some more information about you about the links that you found between King Arthur and Antichrist. I'm much very interested in that. Um, the one thing about Q keeps on saying over and over again too is like Castle. He mentions Castle Lock, and you talk about the White House like it's under protection. Castle Lock, so Camelot Castle. I don't know, but also uh, Trump uh, promised part of his campaign speech, and he did deliver a little bit about declassing more about the JFK assassination, and he's mm -hmm. holding off on the like the the next the best stuff i guess and there's a lot of speculation that he's, he's waiting until the right time but he's gonna release it all that's gonna show um you know people in our government like the bushes for example uh, i don't know who uh were linked to it so mm -hmm. definitely the wow. bushes Def definitely george bush senior there's a picture of him and he was um like he was you know he were he was the head of the cia uh not at the time 
but he was, uh, there's some record of him uh, working for the CIA at, at that time anyway, but there's definitely a very obvious, it's a very clear photo of him being there that day. But um, uh, uh, he, when he was asked where he was the day that happened, he said he didn't recall. <laughs> Who, who can't recall where they were in the day and there's a photo of him there so wow. uh, but that doc, yeah 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 um and yeah i'd love to hear the connections you made because like i said i don't know how it makes any sense it doesn't make sense to me but but i rarely get these nagging uh ideas like this that that don't make sense to me but still won't go away you know like it'd be one thing if i thought oh it all oh. makes sense have you but guys seen that have you guys seen that commercial? Uh, I think it might still be on YouTube. Somebody had uploaded it where I don't recall what company it is. I think it's a travel company. And they show like Bruce Lee, I think it's Tupac Shakur and Michael Jackson sitting on an island. Oh, and uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, Marilyn Monroe sitting on a, a little island and a plane flies over and then they, they hide. So nobody can see them. Remember, they're right. they're all supposed to be dead, and so right. I'm surprised they didn't slide JFK Jr. in there. But I don't think anybody would have known who he was, <laughs> but because he wasn't like a celebrity where you would see him and instantly recognize him, even if they had a look like he'd have to have like a T-shirt on or something. You don't know who he was, but, really? but there was really big expectation for this yep. guy back when he was here when he had the George magazine and all that people really thought that he was going to definitely at some point probably within the next 10 to 15 years of his life uh run for president and they anticipated it it was a lot of hype behind it it's like women when they would see him would just swoon you know and he was uh, good looking yeah i mean it was really i mean people were like he okay he was the Kennedys, I don't know if some of you are too young to remember, but they were like American royalty, okay? I'm not saying I believed any of the hyper stuff. I'm just telling you that that's the way people looked at them. And, yeah. it, you know, so kind of the way they do these celebrities now. Celebrities are really just a knockoff of, like, the whole royalty thing. They give you somebody to swoon over, to give you an idol, you know, to distract yeah. you. But the, the, this... There was there was something about him for a political figure that you really didn't see until uh, Obama. Now, right? Yes. Well, he was yeah. dapper and he had that right. George magazine. Well, his son JFK Jr. had that George magazine. I vaguely remember, you know, well, he had the wife Carolyn Bissett. She was like a Grace Kelly type. They made her, you know, she's all real classy dressed and everything. But, uh, 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 you know, he, uh, I, I thought he was a lot better looking than his dad. Um, but you know, it's interesting, Lisa, it might be up your alley. You know, I, I, one of the, one of the people I found the most convincing, the idea that they might not have been, they might not have actually been a, a female is, uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. Um, right. There's, have you seen that? Like, have you oh, seen yeah. the, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, was... I'm up. That's why I'm, I'm doing tons of research and all that on the on the whole transgender issue. And I know Sister Celine is eager for us to cover that topic, and we're going to get to it in the next couple of weeks here. Um, but there, I'll just give you a little teaser, <laughs> which is that the whole word where they say lady or first lady, that is a play on the word laddie. That they're mm. not <laughs> women, they're men. Oh, I, Jabin, I thought people, when they were saying this, I thought they were crazy. <laughs> Until funny. I start looking into it. Um, they are okay. famously ugly. The, the, they're more than just ugly. They're not, they're, some of them are not women. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it, it's not even that. It's not even just that. But Is you it, know, yeah. I, that's what it, I it mean. Be, like, they were never, there was hardly ever any that were identified as real beauties. And, you know, they're married to the most powerful men in America. So it's kind of weird, you know. That's well, when you look so at uh, Queen Victoria, which is where they got the whole concept of so-called Victoria's Secret. You know, they just canceled the big Victoria's Secret. Because um, of Wes You know, runway, walk, and all that. that they, whatever the controversy was behind it. 
a lot of people are speculating no because people are starting to see that these are not women and yeah. <laughs> uh see i i'm not trying to be funny now i'm gonna say this and i'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings i'm just keeping it 100 when i was growing up there was a thing among black folk that we didn't mm -hmm. understand how come all the white women on tv now you got to understand there was a period of time Black folk didn't yep. see themselves on TV, guys. Right. There, it was rare. So right. it's not like every now, every commercial now, you got somebody, black and nope, wasn't like that. We didn't see ourselves on TV. And all the white women that we saw, we used to go, how come Boy, they yeah. straight up and down pencils? Yep. How yep. come they're sticks? And we were like, and then we see, we see white women in real life. And we go, well, mm -hmm. she's got curves. How come they ain't got... We couldn't yeah. understand it. We couldn't put the two together. Why did it keep yeah. picking picking what we thought were okay? Okay, there was Boyish. a character now. Okay, yeah, there there was a character everybody should remember from Charlie's Angels, Kate Jackson. She is straight up and down slim. I'm not saying one way or the other what she is. I have no idea. What I'm saying is we used to look at women like that and go, how come they all look like that? Where are the right. women that have curves? And it was yep. puzzling to us. Now you flash forward to today and every yep. and, and people are exposing what we forgot to look for, which was <laughs> skeletal <laughs> structure, size of the hand, size of the feet, jaw. But see, there's another trick that they played. And then I'm going to leave it there because I don't give too much away because we're going to talk about this when we do the show on uh, or broadcast on transgender, which is Okay, there's a person, I'm not going to say who, that came up with what's called the three-camera system. And I perceive that the three-camera system was created to hide the transgenders. Because there's really yeah. not a reason to, when you're having a conversation, like if, we're, if there were two people in the room, why do you need all these cutaway shots? You could just hold the camera there with them having a conversation. But they, they and then if you wanted to get a close-up, you could get a close-up. But the three camera system was created to hide their their skeletal structure. Uh, and, and the reason I, I, I perceive that that is actually true is because when I would see some of these people in real life that were supposed to be women, they were huge. What I mean is yeah. their their stature was I would be like, OK, the word Amazon where we get and, we, and that's supposed to be a very large woman. OK, not fat tall and and big well that's what they were I, i'm not going to mention the celebrity right now but i went and saw this particular person before i was fully woke in concert because i was so in love with music and everything and when i saw them i sat there just astonished because i couldn't believe that she was that big i said that's right. a big woman and then I, when i started learning about this stuff i said oh now i know why do you know that they have a place down here in hollywood can't make this stuff up that sells the clothing for the men that want to wear and dress as women. So you can go get yep. a size 15 stiletto. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, and, and stuff that will accommodate the fact that men have bigger feet, bigger hands, no hips. That's so they can go totally buy hip transphobic. How dare all of you? That That's stuff. transphobic. There's no I haven't said thing. anything <laughs> negative. All I said was I that they sell this stuff. And, I take said you're not even allowed to say that now. You can't even say men have bigger feet. That's so oh, that's what they they get offended about that. Please, please, please. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I could find articles that would say that that's totally true. Without I know. Well, that doesn't matter. That doesn't well, that, matter. That are me me medical indicator. There's certain things <laughs> that women women have a curve in their spine. Every woman that is natural born has it because mm -hmm. her pelvis is tilted forward because she's a female. And she has what's called childbearing hips. And you will not see that on these transgenders. Now, I ain't criticizing. It's a fact. So, yeah. again, I've been researching this for, for months. So, guys, we're going to get to it. But we've got to handle it, you know, carefully. We've got to speak because we're not judging. I'm not judging nobody. I don't enable one judge and his name is Jesus. The Bible says, the father judges no man. All judgment is reserved for the son. So I ain't got no right to judge anybody. But we can talk about it. And I'm going to find the documentaries with doctors telling you about the surgeries they do 
that will blow your mind. And this is literal, actual, and factual. It's not speculation. It's not fantasy. So we'll get to that topic. But guys, I'd like you to, it's time we've come to the end of our broadcast. I've had so much fun with you guys this evening. Brother Ben, would you uh, like to give a synopsis and say good night to everyone? Good night, everyone. It was very fun. I always have a lot of fun. Um, and I'd like to explore each of these uh, t- things we talk about more in detail. I'm going to I'm gonna um, start really kind of try to find a topic and just kind of systematically go through it with you guys, get your opinions on it. Um, and I, 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 will, I think I'll start announcing that a hundred times. So if you guys run into anything as, as you're, you're, you know, if something pops in your mind over the course of the week, I can add to it. Um, just so that, uh, again, I want to have more of an audio visual presentation um, on some of this stuff. And so I'm looking forward to that. And um, it sounds like Lisa, that you're not available next week or. Oh, thank you, Ben. Yes. No, I was going to mention that at the end of the broadcast. Uh, yes. No, I'm sorry, guys. We'll not be doing a, a live late night with Lisa and friends next week. I think I will try to find some content to put up in that hour just so you have something to enjoy. Maybe I'll go on a rant or something and post it. But um, <laughs> I'm serious. I got a lot of stuff I'd like to rant about right now. But uh, uh, as of right now, we'll not be doing the broadcast next Saturday. I have a prior engagement. So that's the only reason. I love being with you guys. And it was hard to, to make the choice. But I do. I have to attend this function. Sister Angel, would you like to yeah. say good night to everyone this evening? Or actually Hi, morning. Good. I keep forgetting. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, it was an awesome conversation. And yeah, next week, uh, I was I was actually thinking about I, I might have to take one off anyway, just because uh, I wanted a, a weekend where I could uh, focus on uh, just uh, get, doing some stuff with the kids and doing, you know, get, uh, actually while Joel's actually here um, and not sleeping too late. So uh, that that works out perfectly. And um, uh, I, uh, I definitely uh, uh, will let you know uh, when I. I wasn't trying to prior engage you to be on the show next week with DDoS. I was just I that was just something he had thrown out there. So um, I was meaning to talk to you about it, but um, I can't wait for that to happen either, guys. That's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. He's uh, I, I have a feeling that's gonna be a really incredible conversation. Um, but other than that, a uh, wonderful uh, chat as always, and. Um, uh, God bless everybody in the chat. I love you guys, and I uh, really appreciate you guys listening to us for this long every every weekend. And uh, uh, yeah, can't wait to get back uh, in the swing. Uh, you know, after our little break next week. Awesome. Well, we had about twenty people hang through us. I think uh, with us all night here. Uh, we until the morning. We had, I think, at the highest, right around 30, 31 people listening, which is awesome for this late hour. I'm, not, I am thoroughly impressed. That we even had one person. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, as I said, next week we will not be having a broadcast, but we'll come back with uh, some incredible topics. And if I get enough time to put the last little finishing touch on the whole thing I was researching with transgender that I haven't quite put together yet for it, uh, then we can deal with that. Otherwise, I'm going to take a little bit more time because I think it's very critical. And I just haven't got to the information that I want on that just yet. I'm getting warmer, though. So uh, I thank you guys for your patience on that topic. Uh, You can always... Also, I wanted to invite you to go to the website, the number four, themosthighjesus.com. And in the contact, there will actually be a, a pop-up that will say if you'd like to put in a prayer request. It doesn't have to necessarily be a prayer request. If you guys would like to send me a comment, that's a good place to do it. If you have a suggestion for a topic on a broadcast or maybe a tip on a subject uh, that you'd like to cover, it's just like Sister... Victoria gave us tonight about the whole Q, um, uh, excuse me, JFK possibly being Q, which made it, you know, gave us another about 15, 20 minutes of conversation. It was very wonderful. And I appreciate you guys uh, giving your feedback so we can um, cover some things. We want to, we want to talk about the things that you're interested in because we are very appreciative that you take your time uh, to come out and listen to what we have to say and the things that we consider and muse about. Uh, and we want your feedback as well. Also, any prayer requests, please send them over there, and I'll be happy 
to come onto the broadcast and ask for prayers for you should you need them, beloved, as well as pray for you. Okay. I thank you again for coming out. Look forward to joining you week after next. I'll put a post up anyway, just so you can have a place marker so you won't forget about the broadcast for the following week. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the strong end <laughs> and uh, enjoy the time with your family and friends and hopefully at your worship services. So be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. <laughs>